You're watching Channel 4, proud to be owned by NBC. Channel 4 Sports presents Colorado Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the Colorado Buffaloes versus the Colorado State Rams. Today's game is brought to you in part by Texaco and Haviland Superior Grade. More protection than you'll ever need. By U.S. West, making the most of your time. By Kinko's, the Copy Center. And also by Central Banks, the Better Bankers. Remax, take a step above the crowd. And IBM, working in Colorado for Colorado. All proud companies for Colorado. On a dark, dreary day in Boulder, it's Colorado versus Colorado State. Hi, everybody. Ron Zapolo along with Dave Logan. Dave, I think we're looking forward to a good one today, as usual. When CU takes on CSU, CU ranked ninth nationally. A lot of optimism around the Buffs. Well, I'm sure everybody in Boulder is pleased with that. Quite frankly, I don't think CSU really cares. They got together in 83. They resumed the rivalry. And with the exception of that first year, all of these games have been very tough and competitive. Now, CU played Monday night. And it remains to be seen how Bill McCartney will be able to get his team prepared mentally as well as physically. And, of course, a new era for CSU, the Earl Bruce era. And even though they were defeated the last week at Tennessee, they certainly did a good job. Well, they played well. Anytime you play that in Knoxville and you come away a 17-14 to 14 loser, I think you've done a pretty good job. CSU has got to come in this afternoon and run the football, something that Earl Bruce has been able to do over the course of his coaching years. And Earl Bruce, I don't think, will have any problem whatsoever getting CSU mentally prepared to play CU. They should be ready. Quarterbacks today in his second collegiate start, Darian Hagan for Colorado. Looked very good against Texas, and, and a guy that has to make that option attack go. He's got great speed and quickness. You'll see a lot of Hagan today. And for the Rams, a transfer from Kansas, Kevin Verdugo. Well, he's played, he's played Colorado before, losing 35-10, to 10, but Verdugo, excellent in the pocket, a very calm drop-back passer, and you'll see CSU put it up a bit. Colorado versus Colorado State. Back in a minute with the kickoff. As you see, Ralphie leading the Buffs back onto the field. An amazing story, Dave. CSU, of course, busting it up here this morning from Fort Collins, a short bus trip. They forgot their uniforms, and uh, they had to go back with a sheriff's escort back to Fort Collins to get the uniforms, got them back here in time, and we are ready to go. Well, one of the equipment guys from CSU is probably going to be in trouble. May have to run a few extra laps under the uh, watchful eye of Earl Bruce, but maybe it just means that CSU is excited about this game and ready to go. Tony Carr and Sean Willis are deep for CSU. As you see, a rather cool afternoon. Good football weather, 45 degrees. A little bit of a, a wind that's cloudy, grizzly. Ken Culbertson puts the foot into it. We are underway. This is Carr. Nice hole for Tony Carr. Out to the 40-yard line before Dave McLuhan. Runs him out for CU, so an excellent beginning for CSU. Hey. After a 29-yard return by Carr, Verdugo will bring out the Rams. Primus, Alford, Todd Yurt, Sean Willis, and Greg Scott, the skill position players up front. Dewar, Whitmar, Padilla, Laredo, and Lindner. From the 41, a fumble snap by Verdugo. The flags are down as the pitch. Down the sidelines is uh, Alfred. He's got a big hole. He's going to go all the way, but I have a feeling this one may come back. It's 59 yards. Tony Alfred, the junior from Doherty High School. Uh, it's definitely going to come back. I think it's the illegal formation. It is. No, it's against Colorado. It's against Colorado. Tony Alford striking quickly. Dave Bill McCartney said all week in practice that he didn't think the Buffs looked crisp, and you have to wonder right away with this first play of the game if, if CU is ready to play. Well, it, it doesn't matter as far as CSU is concerned. They're definitely ready to play. The official 
gave the preliminary signal as offsides against Colorado State. But obviously that is not the call. What a terrific start for CSU. Mike Brown, number three, is on for the conversion. Crowd not even in their seats yet as Tony Alford takes it 59 yards. And the kick is good. And you can see the Rams are pumped up. 14.44 to go in this first quarter. CSU strikes first. Well, it didn't start out very well for CSU. As you'll see, Verdugo actually dropped the ball. Looks like he's going to be nailed to pitch. And Tony Alford never has anybody lay a hand on him. Good upfront blocking by Doran Whitmer. And Alford down the sideline. He's got pretty good speed because the man chasing him is Dave McLuhan, who runs under 4-5 and never closed the gap with Tony Alford. I think you're right, Dave. I don't believe Alford was ever touched. That's exactly what CSU needed to do, get off to a quick start, make something positive happen, and take a little bit of the Buffalo's momentum that they achieved last Monday night away. Ransau kicking off for CSU. MJ Nelson three yards deep. Will down it. CU will take it first and 10 from their 20. And they've got to get their crowd back in it because they're stunned. Of course, a number of CSU fans in the crowd as well. Darian Hagan, his second collegiate start. Eric Kissick, Mike Pritchard, and the All-American candidate Eric Bieniemy. Jeff Campbell, the wide receiver. John Parrick, the veteran tight end up front. A big and experienced offensive line. Coleman, Garten, Lewenberg, Muhlenberg, and Mark Vanderpoel. From the 20, Darian Hagan. This is Bieniemy. He's got a big hole. He's got a first down. He's out to the 31, a pickup of 11. Selwyn Jones, the right corner, ran him out. A first down for Colorado. Good job up front by the CU offensive line and Darren Muhlenberg with an excellent block at the point of attack. Eric Bieniemy, maybe a little heavier than last year, but still has good enough quickness to bounce it outside. And right now, CU has to be very patient, not try to get everything back in two or three plays and just methodically march down the field. Colorado coming off a 27-6 win Monday night against Texas. Bill McCartney was concerned how his team would respond. Here's Kissick, the big fullback. Craig Dursell, the strong safety, number four, hit him first. Kissick is out to the 37. That'll be a five-yard pickup, second and five. Sharico Grimes, and Hanks up front. John Moran, Lance on A, and for Eric Tipiconic, Gary Thompson, and Steve Rule, the backers. The secondary, Harlan Carroll, Dan Wilson, Craig Dursill, and Selwyn Jones. Here's the enemy. Not much room. He was hit right away by number 90, Paul Hanks. The enemy will be lucky if he got back to the line of scrimmage. And he did make it third and five. Good job up front by CSU as they get penetration, and that's what you need to have against an option attack. That time Colorado running the I formation. It takes a long time to have the I back who's seven or eight yards deep gain enough momentum to get to the line of scrimmage and beyond. Good job by the Rams. Third and five. Pritchard is now wide to the wide as a wide receiver. Hagan with the option. He'll keep it. He's going to be very close. Paul uh, Hanks, number 90, on the tackle again. It depends where they spot it. I think he's going to be a little bit short. Good job by Hanks stopping Hagen before they get going. Hanks, a 230-pound junior from Hemingford, Nebraska. We're going to have a measurement. Of course, the Bruce era has started, and it started in fine fashion, even in defeat, 17-14 to 14 at Tennessee, and... That is nothing to be ashamed of when you go on the road and play the balls that tough. Bruce is a very good coach. He's proven that over the years. 
in the college ranks, and he is a motivational coach, a guy that gets his kids ready to play. Of course, you don't have to be that type of coach to get CSU ready to play Colorado. Dave Ryan and Arthur just inches short as the crowd is urging Bill McCartney to go for it here on fourth down. 13 minutes still to go in this first quarter. In case you joined us late, you missed a lot. Tony Alford took the first play of the game and took it 59 yards for a touchdown. Well, this, of course, is supreme confidence in your offense and, frankly, a little lack of respect for your opponent's defense when you're going for it this early in the football game, 13 minutes left in the first quarter, inside your territory. Big, big gamble for CU on both sides of the line, much bigger than CSU, as Hagan looks to have the first down. And it is a Colorado first down. And they're checking out a flag, which personal foul on Colorado. Now that may be, Dave, after the first down, so it'll be first and long. Somebody got a little carried away in the pile, and that's going to happen when you have two teams <laughs> interstate rivalries like these two. So now you'll have first and 25, and not the ideal situation, obviously, for a run-oriented team. Dave, the uh, Buffs up front, I'll give you an example. On the offensive line, they average 273 pounds a man, the Rams 245. On the defensive line, the Buffs average 272, the Rams 234. And that right there points out the differences. Hagen has it on first down. Hagen's ahead of the pack. Only one man can catch him. There goes Hagen. He will score. Selwyn Jones was the only man that had a chance. Hagen got by him 71 yards. And there are fireworks early here in Boulder. So that play reminiscent of the CSU touchdown in that it starts off looking like it's going to be a negative play. You can see Hagen drop the ball. He's going to cut through the option lane. The only man that has a chance to get him is number two, Selwyn Jones. I've got to tell you, it looks like Jeff Campbell. Let's see if Jeff Campbell clips Selwyn Jones. That's a very, very close call. CU will get the touchdown. But believe me, CSU, the players, very upset with the officials claiming that Campbell did not get in front of Selwyn Jones. That, of course, the key block of the touchdown run. Don't go away. This is going to be a wild one. There's still 12.35 to go in the first quarter as CU ties it up with CSU. We take a ground level look at the play. Darian Hagan will drop the football at the snap. He's got enough presence to pick it up and continue to execute the option. This is what they've missed the last two or three years. Enough speed at the quarterback position to hit that crease. And now let's take a look at number two, Selwyn Jones, and number 84, Jeff Campbell. You must have your head in front of the defensive player when you leave your feet to throw the block. And you can see right there, tough to see from the angle, but if I had to call it from that angle, I would have called a clip on Jeff Campbell. Darian Hagan is not going to be caught from behind too many times this year. Six plays, 80 yards. CSU scoring on the first play of the game. Took Colorado six plays to tie it up. Culbertson kicks it deep, and Willis will down it about seven yards deep, and CSU will take over on their 20. Well, if any of the players were sleepwalking once the uh, gun sounded and the game began, I imagine they're awake by now. I think the crowd, same could be said for them. They may have been a little quiet coming in, but they're into it now. Pretty much a full house. It's been a pretty abysmal morning, but the crowd is filing in. There are some empty seats, but... Kevin Verdugo brings out the Rams. Tony Alford and Todd Yurt, the running backs. 
This is Alford. Around the corner. Out to the 28 where Michael Jones met him along with Bruce Young. Dave McLuhan was there as well. Defensively, we didn't get a chance to set CU's defense the first CSU series. Arthur Walker, Joel Steed, who had a couple of sacks, Oakland Salavia, Alfred Williams, Terry Johnson, Michael Jones, Canavis McGee. Williams and McGee, of course, the bookend linebackers, the secondary, McLuhan out of Loveland High School, Bruce Young, Tim James, and David Gibbs. Second and two for CSU. That's a first down as Todd Yurt is across the 30, out to the 35. And Avis McGee made the tackle. Yurt, go ahead, Dave. I was going say, good job by CSU, as you see your old Bruce. Last week in Tennessee, 33 carries, 82 yards rushing the entire game. They're probably approaching that amount early in the first quarter. He's a guy that loves to run the ball. He doesn't like to get fancy. You won't see him throw it a lot if he doesn't have to. And one of the things he wanted to do was improve the CSU turnover ratio. And early in the season, he has done just that. Verdugo, over the middle, got Sean Willis. Willis is by Alfred Williams, and he's out to the 43 where McLuhan knocks him out. You can see emotions running high early in this game, pushing, shoving. Sean Willis has already caught the ball on the drag route. Simply outruns Alfred Williams. Good safe pass. Want to make sure you give your team every opportunity to get off early. You'll see Verdugo with the play action pass. Willis will come from the left side of your screen, dragging across underneath the linebackers. And usually wide receivers can do that. Outrun the linebacker to the corner and in the midst of an eight yard gate. Willis five catches against Tennessee last week. Some movement. And this one is stopped. Alfred Williams wanted to make sure that it was stopped. Looked like Steed and Walker in the middle of that line jumped off. You know, Earl Bruce said uh, during his press conference on Monday that he really didn't think his team was in tip-top condition. Thought they fatigued in the fourth quarter against Tennessee and was going to work on that this week. The illegal procedure declined by Colorado. And offsides Colorado, so you've got to line up and do it again. So throw out the play. It'll be second down and, and two. And John Lorita may have moved for the Rams, and in the process, Joel Steen and Arthur Walker were in the neutral zone once the ball was snapped. That's why you could have two penalties on the same play. Oakland Salavea, the only one really banged up in the Texas game, in there now in the starting lineup is Alfred. Should have enough for a first down. They'll spot it at the 46. That will be a Ram first down. Bill McCartney in his eighth season, 36, 44, and 1 in Boulder, but 29 and 19 the last four years. As you look at part of the crowd here at Folsom, Earl Bruce in his first season with the Rams, but his 18th season as a college coach, of course, nine years at Ohio State and six before that at Iowa State. Here's the draw to Alfred. He won't go anywhere. Joel Steed, number 93, the sophomore from Hinkley High School, snuffed it out. That's a loss of three. Now Bill McCartney said Joel Steed may have been the defensive player of the week in Monday night's effort against Texas. That time, I think, a pretty good call, draw plan first down, but the defensive line actually took the offensive lineman with them on the way to the quarterback. There were too many bodies once Tony Alford got the ball. Steed had a couple of sacks against Texas. Second and 13. Verdugo looking to throw. Here comes the rush. Gets it off to Willis. He's got it at midfield, and Michael Jones wraps him up there. Second catch for Willis. It'll be third and six. Well, he told you at the top of the telecast that Kevin Verdugo has great presence and poise in the pocket. He steps up inside of the pass rush, then makes a good throw and a nice adjustment by Sean Willis, who has certainly had his moments against Colorado during his career. Willis had five catches last week against Tennessee and gives him enough speed as the home run hitter on the outside for the Rams. Third and six. Willis and Primus are wide to the right. They've got CU jumping again. Looked like Joel Steed, number 93. 
that may be the one position that you get very, very antsy in the defensive line. The nose tackle. You can see the ball right in front of you. You can almost touch the quarterback in your stance. And once that quarterback delays his cadence, you have a tendency to jump off sides. Good job by Verdugo. Still 9.50 to go in the first quarter. First and 10 now for CSU. The penalty gives him a first down. The ball is just inside the CU 43. A referee today, a Big 8 official, J.C. Lauterbeck out of Arkansas City, Kansas. That's Paul McMonato, number 42, into the ball game. He's run out at the 40. That'll be a pickup of four, second and six. Mike Bernardo, a junior from San Diego. And what you saw there, the favored formation in previous years for Earl Bruce, lining up in the robust tee, just power football, was very successful with that at Ohio State, and even at Iowa State a few times. Scott and Primus now move from the right side to the left side. Here's the pitch to Alford. Inside the 35, running hard inside the 30, all the way down to the buck 27. Another ran first down before the free safety, Tim Jennings, could knock him out. Well, Tony Alford, very impressive early here. Eight carries, 26 yards last week, but he's far surpassed that already. Well, this is the same play that resulted in the CSU first uh, touchdown. And you can see Alford out of Doherty High School really doing a good job of staying in bounds and powering his way for an extra five or six yards. Tim James finally with the tackle. CSU doing an excellent job on the left side of their offensive line of, of neutralizing that penetration and stuffing the CU Buffs. On first and ten, Verdugo throwing into the end zone. Incomplete, he was looking for Willis and Tim James was there on the cover. And Verdugo took a shot as he just now gets up and you can see a, a bit shaken up. And he took a shot from Canavis McGee who actually played the draw fake, got the ball carrier, decided that he didn't have the ball, and you'll see number 96 in a black jersey get to Verdugo just as he releases the football. That is Canavis McGee. Verdugo lands on his right elbow, it looked like, and that pass just a little bit off, very close to a touchdown. McGee, 6'5", 250 pounds, a junior from Houston. Certainly an All-American candidate. Verdugo. It's intercepted by Michael Jones. Jones has had some room to run it back. After the 38, where Colorado will take over. Paul McLenato ran him out. A flag is down. Michael Jones, Dave, a habit of, over the last couple of years, coming up with big plays. And it's certainly one for CU. Verdugo just makes a bad throw. Good play action fake. As he, I believe he's trying to get the football to Sean Willis in a crossing route. But Willis is much deeper than Michael Jones and this one. As you can see, no white jerseys even in the vicinity. Of course, linebackers love this. They all think they were fullbacks when they were in high school. A lot of them were. You can see Jeff Christman, but Paul McLeod, excuse me, running him out of bounds. And I think, I think it's gonna be a clip possibly on CU on the return. Well spotted at the CU 23, so a 15 yard penalty, David, right? It is a clip. So CU will start on their own 23. If you look at Earl Bruce. Well, he hates to have things like that happen. Bruce is a guy, as I mentioned, loves to run the ball. And I think he comes from the, the school of thought that when you throw the ball, only three things can happen and two of them are bad. In that case, he was right. CU went 80 yards in six plays the first time they had it. George Hemingway now in the game, number 22. Here's J.J. Flanagan in the game. Nice open field tackle by Gary Thompson, number 44, strong side linebacker from Overland High School. Flanagan got to the 29, a pickup of six, it'll be second and four. And there is a flag down. And it's on Colorado. Colorado, Dave, making more of the mistakes early in this ballgame. game. 
Well, I'm sure Bill McCarty will partially blame those mistakes on the fact that he's had only three days to prepare. And it's tough to get on any level a team ready to play an interstate rival when you've had that short a period of time to do so. Give CSU credit, though. They came out as we knew they would, very fired up and certainly prepared. You see what Hagen did last week? He had 210 yards total offense. He had 95 yards through the air. Hagen got it. He's back about to the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be second. And call it 11. Colorado last week looking, uh, I thought, quite good offensively against a pretty good Texas defense. Able to move the ball, didn't come up with uh, turnovers. And put 27 points on the board. Hagan to throw. A flag is down. Looks for Campbell. He's got it. At the CSU 32. Two flags are down. One early and one late. The first one's going to be CSU jumping off sides. And the second one happened after Hagan threw the football. we got an illegal motion. Colorado. Offside CSU. So we'll wipe that play out. Still eight minutes to go in the first quarter. I tell you, if this were a practice, both coaches, I believe, would start it over. <laughs> College coaches have a tendency to do that. They take you out to practice, and if you're a little bit flat and not executing the way they'd like, they simply start their clock again, and you start practice over. And with the exception of a couple of two long plays, this game has been filled with poor play. Kevin Verdugo, you see, warming on the sideline, testing that shoulder. He was nailed by Canavis McGee on CSU's last series. So we'll do it again. Second 11 from the Colorado 22. Game is tied at 7. Hagan, the pitch back to Flanagan, loses the football and covers it back at the 20. And Wilson, the free safety, was there. Wilson had a good game last week. 14 tackles versus Tennessee. Seven twenty and counting to go in this first quarter. Third and 13, the ball at the 20. Campbell and Pritchard are the wideouts. Hemingway and Flanagan behind Hagen. Hagen may be audibly. Complete to Campbell. And that should be a first down at the Colorado 36. Well, and although he takes a couple of steps to his right on the drop back, this may be the first drop back pass that Darian Hagen has thrown. It's a good job of getting back and setting his feet. And Campbell with a very nice catch, getting both hands underneath the football. You see him go to the post, try to force the defender inside, and a good plant as the quarterback slips down and Campbell is able to come up with the catch. Harlan Carroll on the coverage lost his footing, and a good job on third down by CU. On first down, Hagen gives it to Hemingway. He's hit and stood up by the free safety, Dan Wilson. Fine play by Wilson. From Coronado High School down in the Springs. Well, that's a nice, nice tackle. Kid that led uh, CSU last week in tackles against Tennessee and against an option attack, you want your free safety to be involved. Dan Wilson, 14 tackles against the Volunteers, and he'll have a few today if they're playing good defense. Second down and seven. Ball at the CU 39. This is J.J. Flanagan. Not much room. Carroll hit him first at about the 40. Good gang tackling by the Rams. There's just no room for Flanagan. It's third and six from the 40. CSU has 20 starters returning from last year's team. You talk about a hard luck outfit last year. CSU was in many, many games, but won only once. They lost to Air Force by six. Colorado, of course, in the last drive, 
beat them in Fort Collins 27-23. New Mexico beat them 24-23. They lost by four points to Tulsa. So it could have been a, a very decent year last year in Fort Collins. It turned out to be a bad one. Nelson and Pritchard, the wideouts. It's third and six. Another flag is down as they stop this one. This first quarter filled with penalties. And that's just a young quarterback being unaware of how much time's in the clock. That's right, the lay of game takes it back to the 36. The clock is right up in the end zone for Darren Hagan to see. And you've got to get that snap off in time. He's got a third and ten. He puts to the enemy. Eric looks for room, doesn't find very much. Craig Dursil is strong safety. Another fine open field tackle, and the Buffs will have to punt. Craig Jerseyle really plays that well. He fights off the block by Mike Pritchard. And Eric Bieniemy too tentative, trying to make a move and decide what is going to do. You've got to set up that block. An excellent job by CSU. Tom Rowan, who transferred from CSU, and look at a job he did Monday night. Seven punts, averaging near 49 yards a punt. Of course, CU, a long line, a tradition of great punters. Rodney Bowen lets it go out of bounds at the CSU 19. This telecast an exclusive presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company is intended for the private use of our audience any reproduction or rebroadcast of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC is prohibited. Thirty-nine yard punt. By Ruin, CSU takes over first and ten from their own 25. We do go back in there. A hand off to Alfred. He bounces outside. Across the 30 to the 33 where Bruce Young, the veteran, strong safety, makes the tackle. But an eight-yard pickup for the Rams. And a good job by Tony Alfred reading the blocks up front. Supp supposed to go off left tackle. But everything is jammed up. Alfred bounces outside, gets a good block downfield. Good block up front by Adam Whitmer. And you can see CSU initially has been very successful running the football. Something that they not able to do. It's something Earl Bruce said this week they had to do. There's the handoff to Mark Renato. He's across the 40 to the 41. Terry Johnson, number 48. Along with Bruce Young, make the tackle. But that's a first down for the Rams. Mac Renato gives you a little more size than Alford and certainly power. Just cuts it up inside. You can see McGee getting knocked out. And this is the kind of football, again, that Earl Bruce loves. Four, five, six, seven yards at a crack. You can dictate the pace of the game. You can keep the opponent's offense off the field. And you can stay close, certainly in the first quarter. Willis and Primus now in the game as wide receivers on first and ten. It's Alford. as Michael Jones and Arthur Walker stood him up. Don't mark it at the 45. It's a pickup of three. Kevin Verdugo with a play action fake, holds the line.
linebackers inside, and Willis with a terrific flag grab in between, as you'll see, David Gibbs and Tim James. See you in a defense where the cornerbacks are up. They try to jam the receiver. If they don't, as they did not against Willis, and he gets onto that safety too quickly, the safety has to respect both the post move and the flag move. That time a great route by Sean Willis. Mike Brown is on for the conversion. Rio five to go in the first quarter. Colorado State 14 and Colorado 7. It all, it all starts with uh, pass protection, and it's good enough up front. And you can see Kevin Verdugo load up. This is a great throw. Gets whacked pretty good by Canavis McGee. A little bit late. And Sean Willis has gone to the corner. There you see behind David Gibbs, who tries to get back on the zone coverage, and in front of Tim James, who's late getting over as safeties are going to be if that receiver gets loose. And CSU, two very explosive drives. And they have the lead. 14-7 Rams. It's a short kick. This one to Pritchard. Across the 20, out to the 24. He actually fell over his own man, Selwyn Jones. Made the stop. He appeared to fall over Scott the goaler. So the Buffs will take over. First and 10 on their own 24. They trail 14-7 with three minutes on the nose to go in this first quarter. Enemy back in there with Pritchard and Kissick. This is Eric the enemy. A big hole up the middle after the 33. Gary Thompson tipped him up. Would be about a yard short of a first down. Well, they call him Scooter. At 5 6, the enemy can get through. Good blocking up front. Mark Vanderpool does a good job from his tackle position. And Eric the enemy is sent airborne. Colorado's a team that. This early in the game, when they fall behind, they don't want to get caught up in the emotion of trying to score with the big play. Just continue to move the ball and do what they do best. And they move it right there. Eric Kissick has enough for a first down. He's across the 35 to about the 37. So first down for CU. You know, that fullback run is most effective when they can slip him in there after having pitch the football or the quarterback is taken it to the perimeter. Those inside linebackers start to flow. They start to be very aware of the outside perimeter running game and before you know it, those fullbacks can slip through for pretty good yardage. Good look at Darian Hagan. This is the enemy. He's got a big hole. Thompson makes the tackle but the enemy out to the 45, a pickup of eight, second and two. And again, Mark Vanderpool opened the hole. Now, these are pretty big holes to run through. You can see Bietemi doesn't get a hand on him until he's six or seven yards down the field. Colorado doing a good job up front with a big offensive line of controlling the CSU defense. As you take a look at Eric Bietemi's yardage against Texas. 16 carries, 66 yards. Here's Eric again, and right away, Shiriko, number 60, nails the enemy short of a first down. Robert Shiriko, the junior from Smoky Hill, fourth on the team in tackles last year, started all 11 games. And the Buffs will have a third and one. In fact, they're going to measure it that close. Shiriko played very well last year in this game in Fort Collins. Had a number of tackles and spent most of the afternoon in the CU backfield. Dave, I don't know what it is. You, you, you take any traditional rivalry, you throw out the relative strengths and weaknesses of the team, it, it seems more than not, every game is like the one we're watching this afternoon. Well, I think CSU, the players feel like they've got a lot to prove. Some of them may have been overlooked by Colorado. Some of them may feel slighted because CU didn't give them a, the opportunity to come here. And they get fired up to play the Colorado Buffalo. They do a terrific job. They're not as big, but certainly they play as well so far. Hagan takes it himself, and he probably got it. And it is a Colorado first down. 
all at the CU 48. That's got to be a concerned head coach. And he's been very, very honest all through the week. He hasn't had good practices. He said, hey, I hope we don't look ahead to Illinois next Saturday right here at Folsom Stadium. We've got to prepare for CSU and do it in a short period of time. The handoff to Kissick up the middle in the Ram territory at the 47. Gary Thompson again made the tackle on Kissick. The senior from Overland Park, Kansas, 6 feet, 225 pounds. Put a solid player here in Boulder. This should be the last play of the first quarter. The enemy looks for a spot. Gets across the 45 to the 44. Chirico hit him low and knocked him down. We've played a quarter. Here in Boulder, Colorado State 14 and Colorado 7. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back at Folsom Field in Boulder where the Colorado State Rams have been the more impressive of the first, more impressive of the two teams in this first quarter as they have scored twice. They're out in front 14 to 7. Colorado though has it. They start this drive at their own 24. They now have it at the Rams, 44, where it is third and two. Hagan has it. There's the pitch to the enemy. He's got plenty of room down the sideline. Makes the cut and scores. Dave, that was a great pitch by Hagan. Tell you what, it, it turned out to be a great pitch. When he pitched it, I think Bill McCartney probably had his heart stop for two or three beats. Watch Hagen get right behind Eric Kissick. And he's gonna make this pitch actually over the outstretched arms of a CU of a CSU ramp. The enemy does a good job of using these blockers. You can see Mike Pritchard out in front of him, Jeff Campbell cuts back inside, and it turns out to be a rather exciting touchdown run. Ken Culbertson ties the game at 14. You're taking another look at it, and again, watch how Darian Hagan at 5'9 is able to get right behind the fullback, Eric Kissick. He's going to make this pitch right over the extended arm of number 59, Steve Rule. Rule could have caught that almost like a basketball pass. The enemy doing a good job and an excellent job by the receivers, Pritchard and Campbell getting in front of the enemy and making things happen. Darian Hagan, maybe the best option quarterback in his sophomore year that Bill McCartney's had a chance to coach. Very dangerous pitch, but he makes it work, and I guess that's the most important thing. It looks like the winner of this game may have to score around 45 points. This may be an old AFL game we're viewing this <laughs> afternoon. He plays 76 yards as we're tied up at 14. If you like scoring, you've come to the right place. Culberton, the senior from Boulder, will kick off. Willis and Carr are deep for the Rams. Carr will take it. Make that Willis, excuse me, and down he goes as Paul Rose, number 50, the junior linebacker from Littleton, made the hit. Let's go down to the sidelines now, and News 4's Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you much, Ron. I'm here with Tom Reinhardt, who played nose tackle for the CU Buffs last year, and this ball game is a carbon copy of the ball game last year in Fort Collins. Yeah, this is quite a big game here, and, uh, you know, both teams are coming out. You can see, C you know, CSU isn't really worried about our ranking. They come out, they fight their hardest. Every year they feel like this, and we know they're going to be probably one of our toughest, you know, big games every time we play them. Do you think the buffs are flat again? I don't think so. I just think they have to settle down and play their game. Maybe they just have to just take it easy a little bit and, you know, work their game. That's about it. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Sure. All right, Tom Reinhardt, former nose tackle for the CU Buffs, back up to Ron and Dave.
Rams after a incomplete. He was looking for Ratzliff, the tight end, Michael Jones on the coverage. After one, Colorado State, 110 yards rushing, Colorado 133. CSU, of course, a long touchdown pass to Willis. The difference in the passing, and you see the total yards. Third and nine for the Rams. Remus in motion. This is a draw play to Alfred. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. McGee and Terry Johnson. Make the stop and the Rams will have to punt for the first time this afternoon. Well, see you defensively fired up. It's been the first positive thing they've been able to accomplish the entire afternoon. A good job the previous play by the linebackers really squeezing that tight end and preventing the first down catch. Tim Luke, the junior from Wheat Ridge, will do the punting for Colorado State. And CSU has taken a timeout. 13.34 to go in this first half. Colorado and Colorado State all tied up in Boulder. Tied at 14 here in Boulder. You see the time remaining. It's been a game of big plays so far. CSU, a 17-point underdog. They don't know that. They don't care about that. Earl Bruce said earlier this week, we just want to be in a position to win the game in the fourth quarter. And judging from the way they've started the game, that's a very distinct possibility. Jeff Campbell back at his own 42 to take the punt from Luke at the 44. This is Campbell in the Ram territory. A big hole for Campbell. Finally knocked down at the 30. Steve Ratzlaff made the tackle and maybe a touchdown saving tackle. Well, when you kick this low, you don't give your guys a chance to come down and break down. And what you have is a guy with 4-3 speed that's running at you while you're running full speed the other way. And Campbell, if he breaks that tackle, probably scores. And a good job by Shane Ratzliff coming up with the, the stop that prevented the touchdown. Jeff Campbell, second fastest player on the team, and a guy that really is excited when he returns the kicks. Colorado with easily their best field position at the Ram 30. Hagan has it on the option, cuts it up. CSU defensed it nicely as Hagan is brought down at the 27. John Moran made the first hit. You know, watching Hagan run the option, it brings to mind the idea, and I will simply ask, can you think of any option quarterbacks that have been great, that have been 6-1 or 6-2? You, you just don't see tall guys. It's so difficult to see a guy that's 5'8 or 9 behind a big offensive line. It really makes him tough to find with or without the ball. Well, that time CSU found him rather easily. It was John Moran again. He's made two hits on this series. Hagan thrown for a loss of a yard. It'll be third and eight. Good job up front by CSU. As you can see, Joe Garten pull. Hagan tries to dip inside, and he is met in the hole by John Moran and a host of white jerseys. Colorado needs to get to the Ram 20 for a first down. Game is tied at 14. Hagan looking to throw, and he'll run. And he'll be thrown down at the line of scrimmage by Gary Thompson. Fine, three fine defensive plays by the Rams. Two by Moran, one by Thompson. Moran out of Pueblo, Thompson out of Overland. So some local kids doing the damage for CSU. And give the Rams credit defensively because right when they can break down a little bit after the punt return, they come up with three big stops. That time Hagen looking for Jeff Campbell to come open. One receiver on the pattern. And Campbell never was able to get uncovered. Ken Culbertson, who was two for two on Monday night, will be on for the field goal. They'll spot it at the 35, the attempt from 45 yards away. And it is wide to the left and no good. So CSU escapes 
without any damage as CU took it over on the 30 of CSU and could not score. four to go in this first half. The Rams have given Colorado all they wanted and more. Verdugo brings the Rams out. First and ten from the 28. Alfred's got it to the 30 and no more. And the ball may be loose. Another saying Alfred was down. Alfred Williams along with McGee, the last two off the pile. David Gibbs was acting like he had the football. David, of course, the son of Alex Gibbs, a friend of all of ours, the offensive line coach of the L.A. Raiders. See if we can see Tony Alford done a great job this afternoon running tough. When he gets stood up, and the ball absolutely is clean. Comes free before Alford goes to the turf. We couldn't see as to who came up with it. This is Mac Renato. To about the 34, Alfred Williams and friends on the stop. Michael Jones had him low. Alfred Williams had him high. They'll mark it just shy of the 35. It'll be third and fourth. Colorado defensively really going after the football every time a Ram has it. That can be good. That also can be dangerous because you'll miss a lot of tackles if you try to get the football and you're unsuccessful. CSU has Eastern Michigan next week and Cal State Fullerton the week after. So certainly the Rams primed for a good start here in 89 under Earl Bruce. Verdugo. It's complete to the tight end Scott. And a saving tackle by Bruce Young. Greg Scott. 205-pound senior from Canyon City. Rob, we mentioned earlier about the robust T formation. All three backs in, two tight ends, and Scott slips to the outside, and you can see Dave McLuhan goes for the tackle. Can't get Scott to the ground, who caught a touchdown pass last week in Knoxville. And Bruce Young with the saving tackle. Scott had three catches last week for nine yards, and as Dave pointed out, one for a touchdown. CSU, first and ten from the Buff 24. Todd Yurt running hard up the middle inside the 20 to the 18. Walker and Williams making the stop. I like that call. Third down in the yard. You line up in a T formation. You've got a reputation as being a coach who likes to run it up in there and get the tough yardage. You slip that tight end out in the flat behind the corner in front of the safety. Very similar to the, the pattern by Sean Willis for a touchdown. Funny how Kevin Verdugo looks much better in Fort Collins than he did in Kansas. Looks pretty good in Boulder, too. Yeah. Here's Yurt across the 15 to the 14. Alfred Williams made the stop. Rams are close to a first down. Bach is running less than nine minutes to go in the first half. 14-14 ball game. Third and about one. Mac Minato in the ball game. Here's Alfred. He's tipped up right away and thrown for a loss. Looked like he tripped over one of his offensive linemen. Adam Whitmer, number 65, actually tripped him up. You'll see Whitmer from the left side pulling. Gets knocked into the ball carry by Michael Jones. Colorado being uh, very aggressive defensively sent both inside linebackers and Jones got to the point that Whitmer on the trap block couldn't turn up in the hole and seal it. Mike Brown is on to attempt the field goal. He was two of three last Saturday night at Tennessee. They'll mark it at the 23. It'll be a 33-yard attempt. And from 33 yards out, Mike Brown has given the Rams the lead. 7.51 to go in the half. CSU back out in front. The 
You can see what we've got coming up at halftime. Of course, everybody's thoughts and prayers with Sal and Essie. Wishing him the very, very best. I believe they're also honoring today, Dave, the 1961 uh, Big A Champions CU team. Were you on that team, or was that a little bit before your time? Well, you were doing the games. I would imagine you should remember. <laughs> Dave Logan. That was a, that was a pretty, good, uh, pretty good outfit. Very good outfit. Gail Widener beat Kansas here 20-19. to 19. Kansas with John Hadle. A lot of names uh, we still know now. Ken Blair worked for the Broncos. Reed Johnson on that team. There's a big hole up the middle for Mike Pritchard. Pritchard across midfield. Makes a move. And he's back down at the CSU 15. Fine return by Mike Pritchard. Scott the goer, the block to Spring Pritchard. Well, this was a play that the CSU assistant coaches in the box were grabbing their head as soon as Pritchard caught the ball. I mean, he has got a hole that you could have run a Mack track through. Look at the black jerseys trying to block one white jersey. Pritchard does a nice, uh, makes a nice move there, cuts back to the inside. And that one looked good right from the start. CU had it at the CSU 30 in the last series, couldn't score. Now they've got it on the 15. Here's the enemy. Not much at all. Pippatonic, number 89, made the tackle after maybe a pickup of the yard as Steve Rule and Biennemi had a few words after that play. Mike Pritchard, who is an exceptional return man, got great speed. You can see good blocking up front. Scott DeGoler will throw an excellent block as Pritchard. Now, he Pritchard right now is trying to figure, how far can I take this thing? Because he knows he's already through the first. Look at DeGoler, number 40, and a good cut by Mike Pritchard. CU has had an excellent return team the last two or three years. Hand off to the enemy. He's hit, breaks the tackle. Didn't break the other tackle, though, of Stolen Jones, the right corner, who necktied the enemy at the 14. Well, that's a play where size may have hurt the enemy. CSU blitzing from the outside. He makes the strong safety miss. But Selwyn Jones tries to necktie the enemy, actually grabs him around the head. You can do a good job of leaving an arm behind, sometimes a leg, but your head has to stay with the body. And in that case, a good tackle by Selwyn Jones. Big play here, Dave. Third and a long nine. CU squandered their last golden opportunity. Thanks to some three fine defensive plays by CSU. And it looks like Bill Coleman, 77, the left tackle, may have jumped early for the Bucks. The Fort Collins partisan that are here cheering on the Rams. Take a look at Darian Hagan. Actually, the entire offensive line moves with the exception of the center, Jay Lewenberg, and Darian Hagan. There's a key statistic in the game. Five penalties for Colorado. Not a one for CSU. It's now third and 14. Hagan wants the throw. And he runs out of bounds at the 15. CSU, two excellent defensive series. Back to back, Steve Rule ran him out. Colorado will be forced again to attempt a field goal. Boy, defensively, that's what you have to do. You've got to try to stop them on first and second down and force an option team into third and long. The chances, obviously, of converting third down and long situations when you predominantly are running team are not very good. They mark it at the 22. Culbertson this time has it. A 32-yard field goal by Ken Culbertson. So with 5.44 left in the half, once again, we're tied in Boulder. to welcome our friends watching in the Colorado Springs Pueblo area. KOAA channels 5 and 31 for today's game. As you see, the story 17-17, 544 to go in this first half. Willis will bring this one out. He didn't get back to the 20.
Mike Motley made the stop for CU. And Colorado offsides on the kick. It looks like they'll kick again. Well, we have a moment. I'd like to welcome uh, into our booth here former CU All-American Leon White, who's up here. He used to play with Dave uh, way back when in the mid-70s, but CU was really a powerhouse. Welcome to Leon, who's had great success after CU, both in pro football and now in professional wrestling. I'm going to teach you a few things about uh, the, the infamous headlock after the game. Well, he already showed me on you a couple of things he did to you, which I wanted to know part of. <laughs> it's very rare you see a guy Dave Logan size back down, but trust me, Dave was uh, shaking in his boots before the game when he saw his old good friend Leon White, who used to <laughs> slap box with Dave some years way back when. Dave still has the scars to show for it. That was the one that got slapped. You know, Cul Culberson last year, 59 kicks, 29 were for touchbacks, and the opponent average start on the 22-yard line. Because of the penalty, that's not going to be the case. Well, the kick comes down to the 20. Willis fields it. He's out to the 28. Greg Beaker, number 53. Along with Bruce Young. Although that's pretty good coverage on the second kick. That's what makes a penalty like that so very, very important. You've got CSU backed up to the 17-yard line because somebody jumps off sides in the kick. You give them 10, 11 extra yards. Verdugo on the day, some impressive numbers. Already over 100 yards passing. At 165 last week against Tennessee. Here's the draw to Alfred. He's got plenty of room. Out to the 38. That'll be close to a first down, and it will be a CSU first down. Fams have really run the ball well. Good design here because most of the play action pass has come off the draw fake. Really giving the ball to Alford now. We've got a lot of wide open yardage. Good block up front by Doug Linder. Also the fullback who you have to have as a lead block. Todd Yurick doing an excellent job. 5-20 and counting. First half. 17-17. This has been everything we wanted to up here in Boulder today. Here's the pitch to Alfred. Across the 40. Out to the 45 where Bruce Young, the strong safety, makes the stop. But CSU continues to run the ball effectively. Quite a first half for Tony Alfred. Of course, if you joined us late, first time he touched the ball, first play of the game, he took it 59 yards for a touchdown. He, Dave said Earl Bruce just wanted to be in a position to where he could win the game in the fourth quarter. The way the game is going, he may get his wish. Mac Renato was the ball carrier out to the 46. Arthur Walker and Michael Jones made the tackle. 425 and counted. Third and four for the Rams. Verdugo has the tight end. Scott, he's got a first down. He's inside the Colorado 40 to the 36. Tim James ran him out. Second catch of the afternoon for Greg Scott. Once again, the play action fake. On the draw, holds those linebackers, and Scott's able to slip across on a crossing pattern. Bruce Young, usually a very sure tackler, just bounces off Greg Scott. And Tim James, again, has to come and, as he's done previously today, save a touchdown. you got to really admire the way Kevin Verdugo is able to stand in the pocket against a very good pass rushing team and find the open receiver. Alfred, very little room. Oakland Salavia hit him first. They'll give him to the 35. Gain of one second now. It's kind of a shame these two teams don't get together for the next two years. I guess the schedules were already set, so we won't see CU and CSU on the same playing field until 1992. 92, and they don't play again in 93, and they resume in 94. So they ought to get together every year. Air Force ought to get together with Colorado. 
people in the state would enjoy it. Back Renato, nice run inside the 30, down to the 28. McLuhan and Alfred Williams make the stop. But CSU keeps gaining chunks of yardage and working on the clock. And if you look at Colorado, all you see is guys with black jerseys getting up very slowly off the ground. I think they're probably as surprised as a lot of their fans at the way CSU has come out, been very, very aggressive offensively, and they have taken it to that defense. Yeah, they really shouldn't be surprised if they remember what's happened just the last three, four years against CSU. Todd Yurt could have a first down. Perry Johnson, McLuhan, Alfred Williams. Williams put him down for good. If they give this forward progress, it should be a first down. You're the two-year starter on a Mission Viejo, California, 226 pounds. And we will have a measurement. Deceptively quick. Todd Yard, an excellent pass receiver out of the backfield. I remember him in his freshman year, looking like uh, he played college football for two or three years. Ron, would you like to call this? I'm going to give him a first down, Dave. All right, my first prediction of the day. And I'm going to quit right there, one for one. Perfect <laughs> on the afternoon. <laughs> Don't forget, Broncos and the Chiefs. Tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, Broncos kick off the 89 season. John Beek and Lyde Huggins up here today and join the ball game in Boulder. This is Alfred. Arthur Walker stacked him up right at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Greg Scott, the tight end, may have jumped. See, you probably thought this moment would never come. I believe this is the first penalty against the Rams in the first half. There it is. And I don't believe CU has the option here because I think they called it before the play. Before the play. Now, they may, in fact, have said the whistle or the flag came after the ball was snapped. Quite a record for old Bruce. Established mainly at Ohio State and Iowa State. What a story when they fired him and the student body came out in revolt. Big rallies for Bruce. I know he was touched by all of that. Been a very good coach. A successful coach. Ball is back at the 31. It's first and 14. Verdugo with time over the middle looking for Willis, and it's intercepted by Tim James. He breaks one tackle, and he's out to the 20. Greg Primus made the tackle on James. So a first down for Colorado as they thwart. An effort by CSU to take the lead. They're going to get penalized 15 yards because Arthur Walker really does this stupid thing hitting a CSU player after the whistle. This is a good idea, and Verdugo's got him open. The ball hangs a little, and the ball's a little bit late. Tough to see from that angle, but Tim James has a chance to cover Verdugo under pressure from Joel Steed. Throws the pass, and you can see that ball just hangs as Sean Willis turns back the other way. And Tim James, from the safety position, is able to get over and make the interception. There you see the penalty against number 83, Arthur Walker, who I'm being decked, a CSU player. Doug Linder, right by the CSU bench. And you want to make sure you block people when you get an interception, especially as a defensive player. You don't get many free chances, but you can't do it after the play is dead. Another look at Verdugo. Under pressure from Walker and Steed. And the quarterback's nightmare is when after you throw it, you see those guys right there turn around and look in the face and start trying to block you. <laughs> see you now backed up. They have it on their nine with a minute 49 to go. We're tied at 17. Here's J.J. Flanagan. Runs hard across the 15 to the 18. Thompson made the tackle. Nine-yard pickup, but the clock is running. Brown with that distinctive J. J. Flanagan. 
Same way they used to say, Dave, Logan. <laughs> Not quite the same way. No, it didn't have the same distinctive kind of feel to it. You know, Colorado seemingly very... Here's Hagen. Runs the option. The reverse to Campbell. He's around the corner, and he's got some blocking. Across the 40. Across midfield. One man to beat. Pritchard knocks him down, and he's down at the 15-yard line. Selwyn Jones made the saving tackle. <laughs> Jeff Campbell, an electrifying run. I was saying, Colorado's certainly taking a lot of time getting the offense going, but this really is well set up. Look at Bill Coleman. What a great block right there as he springs Campbell. Now, Campbell has one guy to beat, Mike Pritchard with the block, but Selwyn Jones, who probably has run further today than any player on the field, you remember Selwyn Jones chasing a CU player down and making the touchdown saving tackle. Does an excellent job from across the field. Well designed play by the Buffalo. 70 yards for Campbell. Here's Flanagan. Bounces into Hanks, and that's as far as he goes as Thompson finished him off. I think you want to think about a timeout here for Colorado. There they finally get it. Let's take a look at the reverse again. As Darian Hagan who's run the option so successfully, just flips it back. You can see number 77, Bill Coleman, out in front. And Campbell right now knows he's got something going. Because CSU really had sucked inside Campbell with a great speed. And good job by the Buffaloes with the play. And a great job by CSU running down Campbell from behind. Selwyn Jones just hustling all the way across the field. He was the left corner. So he was the corner on the side that Darren Hagan had started the option to. Able to make the play. Pritchard made a nice block, and Selwyn Jones out of nowhere to make the stop. 50 seconds left. CU's got two timeouts, so time should not be a factor. Game is tied at 17. It's been a half filled with big plays. I would say, even though it's early, David, we've only played a half, this may be the most wide open, enjoyable, entertaining CU CSU game since they resumed the series. Yeah, I think you're right. Fans have to really like it, especially if you love offensive football. Both clubs have made their share of mistakes. But I think CSU, as they usually have done in this resumed series, they've come out and taken it to CU early. And now they're going to have to withstand the late charge in the second quarter by the Buffaloes. CU's got two timeouts, 50 seconds left, plenty of time. Hemingway, Flanagan, and Pritchard lined up behind Hagen. There's the pitch to Flanagan. Selwyn Jones ran him out at the nine. It's an eight-yard pickup, 44 seconds left. <laughs> That's two pretty quick guys going to the corner. One thing you know with Flanagan, when you receive that pitch, if you're the defensive quarterback, you better change directions and head to the corner because he's got great speed. J.J.'s put on about 15 extra pounds in the offseason. You'll see Hagan with the quick pitch, good penetration there by rule. And Flanagan is just going to try to beat you around the corner. And then get down before the wall gets there. A.J. out of Pomona, California. Six feet, 200 pounds. Third and a couple. The enemy should have a first down. Now you should get your time out, I would think, if you're Colorado before too much time expires. And they're taking it right now. Sharico made the tackle with 37 seconds left. Of course, the clock will stop initially as they move the yard markers. You've got two timeouts left in 37 seconds. Apparently the bench trying to get the attention of some of the players as the clock now starts again. They don't use the timeout. Here's the enemy. Bounces off one man, two man, touchdown. What a run by Eric B. Enemy. Bounced off Gary Thompson and Harlan Carroll and score. And I tell you, Gary Thompson is one of the better tacklers that CSU has on the team. The enemy is deceiving because he's small and yet he's so very, very strong. Very compact runner. Bounces in. Here's Thompson. Just dips the shoulder. Carroll gets the straight arm. He can't haul down the enemy with the right hand. 
It's amazing to watch the enemy during the course of the year, and for a guy that is that small, how many tackles he actually breaks. Broke two right there. And gave CU the lead. Culbertson puts it through with 20 seconds left in the half. And for the first time today, Colorado has the lead. Took them 29 minutes and 40 seconds to get it. And as Earl Bruce starts to think about his speech in the next minute or so, got to make sure you go in and be very positive. I'm sure he will because CSU has played right off their feet. Played very, very hard. They've executed offensively. They've broken down a couple of times on big plays. The long kickoff return by Mike Pritchard. The reverse by Jeff Campbell. But still very, very much in this football game. And that's what Roll Bruce will have to accentuate in the locker room. Don't forget, tomorrow, 2 o'clock, the Broncos take on the Chiefs live from Mile High Stadium. Coverage begins with the Bronco Beat Show at 1 o'clock with a kickoff at 2 right here on Channel 4 in Denver, home of the Broncos. Don't forget, we've got an hour Broncos special tonight, which will be replayed tomorrow afternoon. So all the Bronco news right here on Channel 4. Big couple of minutes, Dave. CSU driving, tied at 17, and Tim James makes the big third down interception. Campbell takes it 70 yards, and all of a sudden, the complexion of the game changes a bit. Well, in this series, the team that has turned the ball over the most times in the game has never won. Tony Carr is across the 30, out to about the 34. And so you see it a lot after plays in a traditional rivalry game, a lot of pushing, shoving. Did you, when you played here, would, did you wish you had played CSU? Well, I mean, I don't know if we wished we played CSU. They, they had a couple of good teams back in the early 70s. They were a competitive bunch. But we never, we, we did play the Air Force, and that game was, was very similar to the game you're seeing today. Air Force, much smaller than CU, but always competitive, always took it to the buffs. Kind of an emotional game. Very much so, yeah. 13 seconds left. We'll see if Verdugo puts it in the air. Reverse. A fake reverse. Alfred keeps it. Nice hole. He's across the 30 to the 32 of Bruce Young. Makes the tackle. Make that Brian Copeland. No, I'm sorry. It is Tony Alfred. See, issue with the fake reverse. Alfred's had a terrific first half. He's going to get bumped right on the right thigh. Gets up limping a little bit. You can see the helmet right there by Bruce Young. See, issue takes a timeout with five seconds left. They've got it. On their own 32, in time for one more play. Well, you've got to decide if you send all the receivers deep and you throw it up. You see Alford trying to rock, walk off the thigh, Bruce, or you just kneel down and call it a half and take your troops in to resume the second half. Don't forget the Bill McCartney Show, Sunday nights at 11 o'clock, following Sports Extra right here on Channel 4 in Denver, home of the CU, CU Buffaloes, of course. That show hosted in fine fashion by my partner, Dave Logan. Watch that show often. You must stay up late. I, I, I'm a late night guy. You know, I work at night. And <laughs> enjoy seeing you and Bill McCartney cashing over. I'll be watching them all night. Yes. As we talk about this one. CSU. Goes to Mike Jimenez at quarterback for this last play, and he hands off to Tony Carr. Nice hold for Tony Carr as he gets all the way out to midfield as time will expire as Alfred Williams made the stop. We played a half, Colorado 24, Colorado State 17, in what has been a very eventful, entertaining first half of football. Had, little, had a little bit of everything. Had good punt returns, good kickoff returns, excellent passing by CSU. Some good option attack football by Colorado. I, I don't think either head coach is going to be pleased with their defensive effort. Let's go down now to Mark McIntosh. Bill McCartney, coach, you got the lead, but it hasn't been real pretty. No, we've given up too many big plays. And then we've been in the scoring zone and haven't punched it in. And we should have taken over the game by now, but we haven't. But it's 60 minutes, and... Uh, we're bigger and stronger, and we should wear them down. Why do you think you've had trouble stopping them defensively? Well, we've given up big plays. Guys out of position. 
guys, uh, you know, he's just not smart and being in a good position. A little bit out of position causes a big play. You think the four days rest is not a factor? Well, I don't know. We'll talk after the game. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Coach Bill McCartney heads for the locker room. His team leads right now 24-17. We're at halftime. Back to Ron and Dave up in the booth. Mark, thanks very much. And Bill McCartney obviously not overly pleased, Dave, with what he has seen in that first half. Well, as you said, there still remains 30 minutes of football for both teams. This game very much up in the air. 24-17 Colorado. We're at halftime. We'll return to Boulder in just a minute. We're back in Boulder. We're at the half. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights in case you uh, joined us late. You missed a lot. In fact, we were hardly settled in our seats when Tony Alford electrified this crowd. We may need about 15 minutes to look at all the first half highlights, <laughs> but this certainly one of the key ones. Alford down the sideline, and again, the guy chasing him is about a 4-4 sprinter, so you know Tony Alford can run. He got the CU, CSU Rams off to a terrific start. You saw that flag. We thought at first it would come back, but it didn't. It stuck, and CSU had the lead, but look at Darian Hagan to tie it up. Well, not to be undone, both plays start with the quarterback dropping the football, but Hagan at 5'9", about 180 pounds, has great speed. Jeff Campbell trying to block Selwyn Jones. Is that a clip, or did Selwyn Jones simply fall down? It was not called a clip, and Darian Hagan gets CU's first touchdown. And that one tied it up at seven, but then, and again, oh, we have another angle of this one, Dave, and you can see you're right. Just like the uh, CSU touchdown, he dropped the ball first. You can see Hagen making a couple of guys miss. He's off to the races, Campbell and Jones. There it is. Was Jones clipped? That's the big question mark, at least in the minds of CSU fans. We'll be talking about Bill McCartney with that one tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Then Verdugo to Sean Willis to give the Rams the lead. Verdugo's had an excellent first half. Very good drop back pass through this thing right on the money as well as splits the CU defenders. And he's another guy that you're not going to catch too many times from behind. But then Eric Bianami, All-American candidate, 12 carries, 88 yards, tied it back up for Colorado. Of course, Eric uh, taking his time here. Here he comes. He didn't take his time on this run. Hagan with a nice pitch. Very, very dangerous pitch. Actually jumps up in the air. Throws it over Gary Rule, and the enemy down the sideline makes a nice cut. Two good blocks by Mike Pritchard and Jeff Campbell as the receivers doing an excellent job staying in front of people and just tying them up. And the enemy is into the end zone. He really read his blocks well. The next one is the one that gives Colorado the lead. Even though it was only a five-yard run, it might have been the enemy's best when you see the tackles that he broke. But he'll step in the hole behind Hemingway. Right there, Gary Thompson has an excellent chance. And Carroll really doesn't get his feet underneath him when he tries to get the enemy down. And that was CU's final touchdown. And that got us to where we are now. Colorado 24, Colorado State 17. Let's take a look at some of the first half stats. First downs, Colorado State 13 to 9. Rushing, though, the big number, Colorado 274. They've only had 16 yards through the air. Total yards basically even the penalties have certainly hurt Colorado. And CSU, they're trying to cut down the turnovers. They've turned it over twice. Colorado has yet to turn it over. I'll tell you this, that may be the first time in college football history that a team that accumulates nine first downs and a half has 274 yards rushing. Uh, that, that's making a lot of big, big plays and not many first downs. We'll come back for the second half. Don't go away. Colorado out in front by a touchdown. Polo and Dave Logan back in Boulder as we get ready for the second half and what we hope to be a very entertaining second half. Look at the first score of the game. First play from scrimmage. Watch Tony Alford lose the ball in the five. He's home free. Actually sticks it above his head. Boy, that's dangerous. And drops the football. Alford slides into the end zone. And what that is, the officials, I don't believe, caught it, but they could have ruled that as a touchback. I believe a touchback had CU recovered the ball in the end zone, CU would have had him on the 20-yard line. Nobody really raised a stink because actually it looked as though he had crossed the goal line, but when you go back and check it again, he did drop the ball before he crossed that line. Another well, interesting one. Check that one out as, as we go on. A lot of guests up here in the booth at the half. Gordon Gee, of course. Always checks in, says hello to former Denver Nuggets. Bobby Wilkerson and Kim Hughes. Bobby, of course, 
an assistant basketball coach here under Tom Miller. Kim, of course, years of success in Europe. And now we are underway for the second half. MJ Nelson from his three. Uh -oh. Across the 20, he's got a hole. He breaks a tackle. He's out to midfield, breaks another tackle. A flag is down. Nelson's down at the Colorado State 22. A flag down at midfield. It's going to be clipping both officials, at least two of the officials, get the clip. And it happens about the 45-yard line of the CSU Rams. Take a look again. Colorado really has done an excellent job up front blocking in kickoff returns. You can see many, many black jerseys. MJ Nelson at about 155 pounds breaks a lot of tackles. Tough to see the clip from that angle. You see the official reaching for the flag. But they had great success returning the kicks. Let's see if we can see the clip. You can see right there. That is the clip that was called. You talk about a change. Colorado would have had it on the CSU 22. Instead, they will take over on their own 38. And Dave, we have had some wild kickoff returns today. Greg Beckert, I believe, gets called for the clip. Freshman out of Longwood. First down, Hagen, the option. Wanted to pitch it. And didn't. And a flag is down. And I think what you're going to have here, it's been flag day in Boulder, but I think the free safety, Dan Wilson, or Craig Jersell, the strong safety, actually tackles the pitch man, Hagen, very dangerous with the football, may have tackled the pitch man out of bounds in the Colorado bench. And it's a personal foul on CSU. Craig Jersell, very, very tough from the safety position, good tackler, but he tackled the guy without the ball cleanly out of bounds. First down. So it's a first and ten for Colorado. The ball moves all the way to the CSU 44. We're in the third quarter, 24-17, Colorado. J.J. Flanagan, a yard at the most. Eric Thompson made the hit. Thompson's had a fine game on defense for CSU. What a good job that time of taking on the lead block, Eric Kissick, stuffing the block and being ha having the ability to make the tackle. Dave so Oval James, CSU's athletic director at the half, and he, of course, was very pleased with CSU's effort in the first half. Hagan. Completes it to Campbell to the CSU 32 where Selwyn Jones runs him out with authority. The crowd wants a flag. They won't get one. That's another Colorado first down. They'll mark it at the Ram 31. Pretty good throw by a right-handed quarterback running to his left. We'll take a look at Campbell on the move. You've got to take that quarterback, Selwyn Jones, up far enough. Then come back. He slides to the front. It almost looked like the play was designed to be a pitch to Mike Pritchard, as you see in the right-hand side of your television set. Selwyn Jones runs him out of bounds, and Buffalo's a moving. Hagan, two of two on the day, both to Campbell. Here's Kissick. He's got a hole. He's down to the 24 before Wilson, the free safety, makes the stop. Seven-yard pickup, second and three. CSU really had a tough time in the second half against Tennessee. The Rams had the football 10 minutes the entire second half, which tells you maybe that the defense wore down a little bit and they allowed Tennessee to control the ball game. And again, that was something that we pointed out. Earl Bruce very concerned in his press conference Monday. Maybe they ran out of gas and he conditioned them, conditioned them tough this week. And of course, you heard Bill McCartney tell Mark McIntosh right at the half that we're bigger, we're stronger, and maybe we can wear them down. Not according to McCartney. A lot of pointing going on. They're going to snap it, or are they? No, they're not. But, you know what happened? Darian Hagan sees Mark Vanderpool jump, and Hagan, I believe, anticipated the referee's flag, backed off, didn't get it, and then didn't get up and snap the football before the 25-second clock expired. 
and therefore a five-yard penalty on CU. Moving it back to the Ram 28. Just got to go ahead and let that official make the call. Sometimes you may get away with one. In that case, they would have had Hagen been able to snap the ball. Look at the penalties. 11 for 90 for CU, 2 for 20 for the Rams. Hagen's got it. Now the pitch to Flanagan. He's run out at about the 22. I'll tell you, Darian Hagen has no fear of pitching the football in any position. He pitches it like you're shooting a free throw. He's done it twice. I'm sure Bill McCartney will tell him when they review the film that, Darian, this is okay to do, but let's not do it on a continuous basis. Let's see if the pitch actually is behind. Hagen gets right behind Kissing, jumps in the air, pitches it left-handed. That ball looks like it was a forward pitch and should have come back. Flanagan caught the ball while crossing the 25-yard line. Third and one. Kissick. Should have the first down and the Ram 20. I think that was a forward pick. And now CSU, defensively, they've got to come up with a big play. They've been able to keep CU out of the end zone a couple of times when the Buffaloes have had good penetration. And because of those defensive stands, they've been able to stay in the football game. First and 10, the ball in the 20, 12, 10 to go in this third quarter. Colorado out in front, 24 to 17. Hagan pumps a couple of times, has room up the middle. Hit by Thompson, but not until Hagan gets to the 10-yard line. That may be enough for another first down. Hagan had five carries for 83 yards. Does he remind you a little bit of an Oklahoma quarterback? He certainly does me. Hagan pulls it down, ducks up inside. Just very, very quick. He's nifty. Got great balance. And I think maybe the most important factor of his game, he's got supreme confidence. He really believes that he can run the option. He can lead this football team. He thinks he can make the big play every time he takes a snap. And he's now over the 100-yard mark as Gary Thompson comes off. After being shaken up on that play, Hagen, 5'10", 185 pounds, a sophomore from Locke High School in Los Angeles. Played some as a freshman behind Sal and Essie. Good enough athlete to be drafted in the eighth round by the Seattle Mariners as a shortstop. So he is not one-dimensional. Of course, that's the thing to do now. Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, Hartley Dykes, Hagen. Known for a loss by Robert Chirico. Fine play by the junior from Smoky Hill High School as he throws Hagen down. Back at the 14, a loss of four. That's a great job by Sharico. And again, when you run the option, the thing that kills you is penetration. Watch number 60 come from the left side as he beats Mark Vanderpool and gets to Hagen before Hagen can make the pitch. CSU is going to have to take some, some gambles up front. Going to have to send some people utilize some stunts, get some people into areas where Colorado can't block them. Second and goal from the 13. Flanagan trying to get outside. He's cut down by Wilson, the free safety. After he got a yard to the 12, so it's third and goal. Well, third down and goal to goal is an offense that doesn't throw the ball a lot. Kind of put in a tough predicament. CSU doing a good job that time sending the two inside guys. Lance and A had a great chance of Flanagan get out ran to the corner, but Wilson was right there to make the tackle. So let's see what they can come up with on third and goal from the 12. Campbell is wide to the right. Hagan gets hit right away and is thrown for a loss at the 13. And there's a late flag, a couple of late flags, as Andy Burns, back up free safety, made the tackle. This could be a key penalty, but as you see there, Tipicani thinks it's on CU.
Well, Colorado's made their uh, share of silly mistakes today, and this, if it's a big one, just adds to the list. Culbertson is already on the field for the Buffaloes. Personal foul on Colorado. Wade Joe Barton was arguing that may have been on Joe. We'll take another look at it. See if we can see. Darren Muhlenberg's been. Robert Chirico runs Muhlenberg right over the pile. Let's we'll see if we can see how Muhlenberg responds. It kicks his legs. Boy, that's what the flag was thrown on. It looked like he kicked air. You, know, you, you have to penalize teams when they don't perform the right way, but we've seen so many flags today. Sometimes it just almost gets out of hand. Personal, Colorado. Dead ball, personal. So now they've called both teams. Let's see if we can see. Chirico takes Muhlenberg right over the pile. Now, Muhlenberg, those are his black feet. Now he actually does connect <laughs> to the midsection of Chirico. I, I feel like we're watching All-Star Wrestling or something. Well, speaking of that, Leon is here, your old teammate. They will mark it after offsetting penalties back at the 13. When this is all unraveled, Ken Culbertson will attempt a field goal. Well, this is almost as bad as instant replay of the National Football League. We've taken now about four or five minutes to decide as to who we're going to call the penalty on and how we're going to mark it off. But at least we don't have to worry about crowd noise here in Boulder. There'll be no crowd noise rule in effect. They've amended that rule a bit. Did you see that? Yes. Not quite enough, but they have at least taken the first step. That had to happen. You can't have a game decided. 10.48 to go in the third quarter. Yes, many Colorado State partisan making the short hop from Fort Collins to Boulder. And they are being treated to a fine effort. Very young Rams. CSU's got Eastern Michigan, Cal State Fullerton on the 30th of this month. Home against the Air Force. All three of those games, home games in Hughes Stadium. J.C. Lauterbach explaining it to Earl Bruce. Now he has to trot across the field and tell Bill McCartney the same thing. I think what we'll have is a kick. I'm just not sure as to where they'll kick it. Well, Culbertson is now coming off the field. So evidently, they've called. Well, let's wait and see what that call. Maybe third down all over again. But they may have called. Well, he's given CU a first down. I'm sure old Bruce, in a very familiar pose, is a bit curious as to what exactly happened. Do you understand this? Because I'm not clear as to why CU. I'll tell you, unless they called the penalty on Darren Muhlenberg during the course of the play, and they called a dead ball foul on Robert Chirico after the play had been stopped. That may be. It's a big play. The pitch to Flanagan breaks the tackle. Touchdown. And a flag down, late flag, after the score. Hey, that's going to be a big play in the game because that gave CU a new life, and they score. I, I think that's what it had to be. Evidently, the referee, J.C. Lauterbach, called Darren Muhlenberg during the course of the play and actually flagged Robert Chirico after the play had been whistled dead. Therefore, you would penalize CU during the play, but the, the dead ball foul would result in a first down. I mean, I feel like I'm at the Pentagon with all these conferences. We've stopped play the last two or three consecutive plays. This is probably going to be a penalty on the celebration in the end zone by CU. Of course, the way things are going, maybe we shouldn't even... Uh, Hazard a guess. It's Dave, from where they threw the flag, Dave, I thought it might be on CSU. 
There's a personal foul on CSU. So they're going to be penalized on the kick. Let's take a look at it from the ground level. Watch the sideline. It's, it's a great move by J.J. Flanagan avoiding the tackle. It would have stopped him for about a five-yard gain. Right there, dips inside, keeps his feet, and into the end zone. Didn't see any personal foul from that angle. Something happened on the CSU sideline inside the 10-yard line that precipitated that flag. Of course, something happened after J.J. Flanagan had dashed into the end zone because it's a dead ball foul. CSU fans throwing uh, some beverages on the CU players. Of course, I, I guess it's safe to say there's no love between these two teams, but it's been a pretty good football game so far. That it has. Correction. It is a dead ball. Personal. And it's on Colorado. JC, you got to get it together. They'll still penalize on the kickoff, but in this case, it'll be against CU instead of CSU. Let's take a look at it. Good block up front. As you can see, Mike Pritchard cutting down a linebacker. Good dip inside. Dan Wilson has a chance against Flanagan, but can't make the tackle, and we still can't see as to where the penalty came. Back to live action. Culbertson on for the conversion, and he's got it. 10.31 to go in the third quarter. It only took about 15 minutes to win those <laughs> last two plays. Colorado out in front, 31 to 17. Here's J.J. Flanagan stretching CU's lead. Good job making the pitch by Hagen. And again, you expect great backs to make people miss. Wilson's right there for the tackle, but Flanagan steps inside. We've been told now on the double foul that resulted in a CU first down, that when you have a personal foul against the defense, it always results in a first down. Same to you, of course, doing that call. Kicking off from the 20, so Willis takes it at his 18. He's out across the 35, and that's as far as he'll go. Chad Brown made the stop. And now with over uh, 10 minutes to go in the third quarter, still plenty of time for CU offensively. You don't want to lose your patience. You don't want to feel the pressure of the Colorado lead right now. Do what you've been doing in the first half. Nice little mixture of run and pass. And hopefully, if you're a CSU fan, you'll be able to move the ball. Willis and Primus, the wide receivers. Yurt and Alfred behind Jimenez. And Yurt is thrown for a loss by Perry Johnson. Jimenez, 6'3", a 200-pound junior from Woodland, California. Played two games last year. Was used sparingly. Verdugo was shaking up early in the game, David. Maybe the shoulder has stiffened. You see Terry Johnson on the inside blitz, unaccounted for as CSU pulls the guard, and Yurt never has a chance. You know, the competition between the quarterbacks at CSU, very, very close in the spring. Him and has had his moments, too, so I, I don't know that CSU loses a great deal. Certainly, Verdugo had an impressive start today, but Jimenez very capable. Second and 12, Jimenez. It's complete to Sean Willis at midfield. David Gibbs and James arguing that the ball was not caught, but CSU has it. First down at midfield. Well, you'll be David Gibbs covering Sean Willis, who does have great speed. You must respect that. Watch the adjustment he makes. That's a pretty good catch. You see both hands under the football. The ball underthrown and the feet slip out. Willis with his fourth reception of the afternoon. First and ten for midfield. Rams trail by two touchdowns. Here's Alfred. Got two yards before Arthur Walker wrapped him up. Walker, steady performer, a senior, 275 pounds. Gain of two, second and eight with nine minutes to go in this third quarter. Colorado out in front, 31-17. How about that for Tony Alford? That's a pretty good first half. His first half beat his season of a year ago. Of course, in fairness, we must say he was injured much of last year. Speaking of Alfred, he's got the pitch, he's got room. Actually, Greg Primus, his own wide receiver, took him down at the 42. Pick up of six, it'll be third and two. This is why wide receivers don't really care to block all that much. They'll block a little bit more in college than they will in pro football. Good option by Jimenez as Alfred gets the pitch with nobody there. You see Primus 
Oh, just getting run over and a knee right in the middle of the back. Just trying to do his job. Third and two. Back Renato is in, Primus is out. Jimenez has it, and he's got a first down at the Colorado 39. Alfred Williams made the stop. So Jimenez in for the injured Kevin Verdugo. As the Rams Go moving. No quitting the CSU bunch. Good drive. They've been able to move the football against CU in the last couple of years. They've had over 430 yards in each of the last two contests. They'll probably have over 400 yards before they're done today. Here's Todd Yurt. He was hit by Salavea first and thrown for a loss back at the 40. Second down, a long 10, the ball just inside the 40. CU shows blitz. Here comes the blitz. Jimenez gets it off, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Willis. David Gibbs was blitzing from that right corner spot, and it's third and 10. You might have offsides against CU. CU definitely blitzing on the play, and it looked like Michael Jones was stepping in there, being aggressive, and may have got caught. It is offsides on Colorado. We have an injury update. Kevin Verdugo, Ron, as you mentioned, hurt his shoulder. Probably won't see further action this afternoon. First half, he was blitzed by McGee after we got rid of it. Came down hard on his shoulder. Stayed in, but it may have stiffened at the half. Jimenez played the last play of the first half. Verdugo originally injured his shoulder last Saturday night in Tennessee. May have re-injured it today. Looks to be done for the afternoon. So we're about ready to pick up action again. Second and five. Jimenez has Yurt inside the 20. And that will be a first down. As McLuhan and Alfred Williams and him out right at the 20. Nice little play action fake. Yurt just slips from his halfback position into the flat. Easy throw by Jimenez. And nobody there. We said earlier, Todd Yurt, a very good receiver, 227 pounds. You can see shoes done a good job of just taking what CU gives them. And you can see sucked inside Alfred Williams on the play fake and no support from the corner. First and 10 from the 20. Yurt up the middle. Joel Steve makes the tackle, but not until Yurt gets to the 15. Flag is down back at the 21. Appears to be on Colorado State, illegal procedure. CU will take it, that'll move it back to the 25. Make it first and 15. Part of the crowd of, I would guess, around 45,000 here in Boulder. That's a bunch of penalties. Not too bad for CSU. They were penalized last week four times against Tennessee, and Earl Bruce said, I'd take that every week. But I don't think Bill McCartney will be satisfied with 13 infractions by his Buffaloes. Remus and Willis into the game as wide receivers. Jimenez rolling to his right. Looks for Willis. Will they give it to him? Nope. He juggled it on his way out of bounds. Incomplete. Second and 15. I tell you, I, initially, I thought Sean Willis got his foot down after he had control of the football. Jimenez feels some pressure up front. You can see Alfred Williams, Joel Steed, and company. Let's see if Willis actually comes down with this. He bobbles. There's the foot. Oh, I don't know. 
John Willis looked like he had the right foot down. He tips the ball in the air. Now watch his left foot. The left foot is down inbounds. Does he have control of the football? Very tough to see. I think they could have called that a reception. Second and 15. Pitch to Alfred. Slips and falls back at the 25. Of course, in college football, you slip and your knee touches. That's it. Plays over. Let's take a look at Deshaun Willis try for the catch. He'll tip it up in the air. Is the left foot on the ground there? Does he have it in his hands? Might have bobbled it a little bit. Looked pretty good from this vantage point. We took a vote up here in the booth, and by a 5-2 vote, we said, yes, it was a catch. Fortunately for everyone, it doesn't count <laughs> what we say. Third and 15. Play action. Jimenez, here comes the rush. He's going to run the football. And Young makes the stop at the 21. Where it'll be fourth and 11. Mike Brown will check in for Colorado State. This field goal will be about 38 yards. Brown already has connected on one today from 37. Colorado doing a pretty good job putting pressure on Jimenez. Alfred Williams and Arthur Walker actually collided in the backfield. Otherwise, they may have had the sack. On its way. And it is good from 38 yards out. Mike Brown brings the Rams that much closer. 5-10 to go in the third quarter. Colorado still out in front. 31 20, 5 10 to go in the third quarter as the Rams take it 44 yards in 11 plays. Mike Brown, a field goal from 38 yards out, and the Rams trying to stay in striking distance. As the trail by 11. This one, a line drive to Pritchard. Across the 20, hurdles a man. Across the 35, out to the 38. And he was stopped by James Mestek, number 47. I tell you, Earl Bruce said last week they did a great job on kickoff coverage against Tennessee. Not this week. Give CU a lot of credit up front. They're knocking guys down. Mike Pritchard up and over the pack. And CU's had pretty good field position the last three or four times they've had to field kickoffs. CU starts this one from their own 39. Here's the enemy back in the game. And Thompson, who wraps him up at the 41, a pickup of two, second and eight. Good hit by Gary Thompson. Looks just like a linebacker should. He's 6'1", 225 pounds, active all over the field, certainly the leading tackler for the Rams this afternoon. Well, he's well acquainted with Eric Bieniemy. He's... Uh, He's met number one quite a few times. Here's the enemy again. Nice hole up the middle. Eric dances and gets almost a midfield. Great run by the enemy. He knew where the first down markers were, and he got there. Harlan Carroll, the left corner, made the stop. Now, this is a pretty good play and a good idea as to how the enemy makes so many yards. Watch him hip and hop. He dances through the hole. And again, Harlan Carroll comes up and gets this left arm, the straight arm. Watch how far he carries Carroll on his back at 5'6 and about 190 pounds. He's got great vision, very quick feet, and very, very strong. Scooter about to go over 100 yards. Hagen from midfield. Wants the throw. Pumps. Looking deep for Campbell. It's incomplete. Campbell feels he was interfered with. Well, he was. Don't know if we'll have a chance to see this, but Jeff Campbell is bumped. So when Jones was on the coverage. When the ball is in the air, and the ruling, of course, you cannot prevent a receiver from getting to the football once it leaves the quarterback's hand. And clearly, Jeff Campbell was bumped. I don't know if we have a chance to look at it, but you'll just have to take our word for it. Second and ten from midfield, four minutes to go in the third quarter. Colorado out in front, 31-20. Hagan's got it. 
cuts it up inside the 45. And Thompson and Wilson meet him there. Pickup of six. It'll be third and three. In Colorado is taking a timeout. I wonder if Hagen hurt himself. He was squeezing his hand there like he may have come down funny on that hand. Three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll come back and see what CU can do on third down. Darian Hagen was shaken up. It appeared to be an injury to his hand on that tight shot we had. And number four, Charles Johnson, a 5'11", 165-pound sophomore from Detroit, now in the ball game for CU on third and four. Not that Johnson can't run the option, but if you're the CSU defense, you've got to play this as a straight handoff to the enemy, a power play on the right or left. I mean, right, and the enemy, the backs behind Johnson. Here's the enemy. A first down and more. Inside the 35 to the 33 where Andy Byrne made the stop. And another Colorado first down. They may have known where it was going, but you'll see Eric Bieniemy. Good lead block by George Hemingway. And an excellent block inside by Jay Lewenberg, the center, as he sealed off the right tackle. And Bieniemy just scoots through. See, I see you very, very big and strong up front. And I think you're starting to see CSU wear down a little bit defensively. Hagan being attended to on the sidelines. We'll get you a report as soon as we have something. The pitch to the enemy. Inside the 30 to the 29. You've Eric three. I think good play selection by Jerry DiNardo and Bill McCartney. Charles Johnson in the game. And again, he's he's very good at running the option, but you want to have him get his feet set, get two or three plays under his belt, and you haven't seen CU run any option attack so far with Johnson in the game. Darian, excuse me, Dave. Darian Hagan is now jogging into the CU locker room. Here's the handoff to Hemingway. He's down to the 25. Rule made the hit. So we're not sure the injury. I am strictly speculating. It looked like it may have been to a hand or a forearm. But he's inside, and Charles Johnson is in control now. And the Buffs have a third and three from the CSU 25 with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. The enemy. What a great second effort by the enemy. He was down. There was no fumble. We'll see where they spot it. But even if he's short, a terrific effort as he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Knew where the first thing, knew where he had to go to get that first down. So we talked about his strength much of the afternoon. CSU is sending everybody, both inside linebackers. You can see Matt right in the holes. The enemy lunges forward. Was the ball? Actually, that is not a fumble. Once the ball hits the ground, the play is dead. Good strength, again, by Eric Pinnemi. Right behind Hemingway, you can see the corner comes inside. Selwyn Jones, but it does not prevent Pinnemi from gaining a yard and a half. Hagan took a helmet to the forearm. They're x-raying him now inside. It's fourth down and a foot for Colorado. The enemy, first down. He's got enough, and Colorado will retain possession. So Darian Hagan took a helmet to the forearm. He's being x-rayed now in the CU locker room. Hagan left with 103 yards and 14 carries. That's why it's so vitally important to have a lot of depth if you're an option team, not only a quarterback, but a fullback and running back. The guys handle the football so many times, and a quarterback, you get popped so many times, even when you don't have the ball. But you've got to have another guy, and, and in some cases, two or three quarterbacks behind that starter that can run the option. First and ten for Colorado. They've got it on the Ram 22. Eric Fianemi looking for a hole. Outside. 
inside the 10 and down to the 9, where Wilson and Jones ran him out. A fine run by the enemy, and another Colorado first down. Ron, I think one thing that really sticks in your mind when you watch a defense and they start to miss a lot of tackles, that's usually a sign that they're tired. Very crisp and clean in the first half tackling. You can see Biennemi just running through arm tackles. Dan Wilson, an outstanding tackler, misses that time, and Selwyn Jones knocks Biennemi out of bounds. But I think CSU is starting to become a bit fatigued, and why wouldn't they? They give up almost 40 pounds per man up front. And CSU right now just very content and hammering the ball inside. CU first and goal from the CSU 8. On the delay, the pitch to the enemy. He's down to the two. Tip Iconic made the hit on the enemy. Second down and goal. The enemy just knows where to pick his spots and then accelerate. Well, this is the case. Dan Wilson, number nine, gets it. Now you see me, now you don't. We'll see Wilson left hand side. He's got the enemy right in his sights. Watch the enemy jump over him. That's a great athletic move, able to come down, keep his footing, gain a couple of extra yards. Tip Iconic, the linebacker, has to corral him at the three-yard line. But Wilson's seen a lot of BME. In that case, didn't see much. Second and goal. Johnson has it, cuts it inside, and he's short. Paul Hanks, number 90. One of many on the pile. As Bill McCartney checks the clock, and it says a minute to go. In the third quarter, Colorado out in front, 31-20. CU trailed 7-0, 14-7, and 17-14 before taking the lead for good, 24-17, late in the second quarter. Johnson. He's into the end zone, cuts down. This is a pretty good job by a guy that hasn't played very much. To fake the Hemingway, he decides to make the cut. He goes for the goal line. The ball does cross the plane. And that's a touchdown for CU. Charles Johnson, once he makes up his mind to make that cut, well, you got to get with it. You see the 165-pound sophomore did just that. Dalbertson with the conversion, and CU stretches the lead now. 38-20, the first collegiate touchdown for Charles Johnson. And again, I think Bill McCartney is getting what he wants in the second half. Good up front surge by the offensive line. Those backs are running tough, and they are simply out manning, overpowering a very game CSU team. Biggest lead of the game for Colorado with 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Sign on with Channel 4 in Denver this season to help the Mercy Medical Center care for Denver's needy during the Broncos regular season. Your pledge for every quarterback sacked by the Broncos will go directly to Mercy. Pick up a pledge card at any King Supers, Wendy's, Gart Brothers, Dave Cook, or to the St. Anthony's hospital system. 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Colorado 38. Colorado State 20. Bruce, of course, the head coach at Ohio State, the last time that he saw a Colorado team in person, they defeated Colorado back in Columbus 13 to 10. He was asked the biggest difference between that team and this team, and he said right away their offense is much more explosive. That a game that Colorado probably should have won back in Columbus. CSU will run it out. Rodney Bowman, nailed by Tim James. Good return, though, by Bowman as he got it out to the 22. And that is where CSU will start with 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. CU taking it 61 yards on 13 plays. And now, obviously, trailing by 18 points with time running out in the third quarter. CSU's going to have to throw the ball a bit more than they wanted to coming in. Jimenez still at quarterback. The pitch to Alpha. He's out to the 25. Terry Johnson, Williams, and Bruce Young. 
all hit him at different times on that run. Charles Johnson capping off that drive, which took almost five minutes. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. We have played three here in Boulder, and Colorado out in front, 38 to 20. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Boulder. We've got a quarter of football left. Colorado behind for most of the first half. Now out in front, 38-20. CSU will have to come back with their second-string quarterback, Mike Jimenez. Kevin Verdugo knocked out in the first quarter with a shoulder injury. Colorado has lost their first-string quarterback, Darian Hagan, a helmet to the forearm. He's in getting x rayed right now. The handoff to Yurt makes a nice run. Across the 30 to the 31. Terry Johnson made the tackle. It'll be third and short for the Rams. Yurt and Alford doing most of the work out of the backfield for Earl Bruce today. Mac Renetto has played some. That's been about it. Third and two. Mac Renetto. He's got a first down at the 35 before Tim James made the tackle. So a first down for the Rams at their own 35. A lot of offense there, Dave, after three quarters. Well, again, CSU's had a pretty good uh, total the last two or three years against CU, 363 so far. And Colorado really has done a good job running the football, 403 total yards for the quarter to go. Colorado with their first team defense. They've been out there all day. This is Yurt up the middle. Across the 40 to the 41. Michael Jones. Make sure he went no further. CSU's done a good job running the football. Most of their yardage has been accumulated running to their left. Now, Oakland Salavea, who missed some of the Texas game with a sprained ankle, though started against uh, CSU on the right side, he's had a tough time. I'm not sure he's 100% physically. Matter of fact, I'm sure he's not, and CSU's done a good job taking advantage of him. He just hobbled out, Dave, and Leonard Renfro, the freshman, is back in as Tony Carr, number 32, takes it out to midfield. That'll be enough for a first down. David Gibbs made the tackle. Salavea, as you mentioned that, just then hobbled off the field, and Leonard Renfro... 6'4", 275-pound freshman is in the ballgame. Again, left side. The Rams have picked up good yardage running behind the the offensive left side. Adam Whitmer, Scott Dorr, Mike Padilla, the center. Done a good job up front. First and ten at midfield for the Rams. This is Yurt up the middle. He's got a couple. Arthur Walker made the stop. 13 minutes to go in the ballgame is... When you keep it on the ground, the clock does wind down quickly. There's still time, obviously, for CSU to get back in this game, but they do need three scores, at least three scores. And although they're getting good yardage running the football, you need to score as quickly as you can, especially the way CU offensively has been able to move the ball recently. Second and seven for the Rams. Willis and Primus are wide to the right. Alfred, the ball carry. He's down to the 46. Leonard Renfro, the freshman, just in the game on the stop. It'll be third and about five. As that clock continues to run at 12, 20, and counting. Good look at Alfred, who's been a workhorse today. Colorado State takes a timeout with a third and five just outside the CU 45. I'd like to welcome our friends watching the Colorado Springs February on KOAA Channel 5 and 30 to today's ball game. Latest we have on Darian Hagan, the preliminary reports are nothing serious, just a bruised forearm, and apparently he will not return this afternoon. 
Well, it's good news for CU. You know, I think both teams will be able to come away from this game and, and really have learned something. CSU has found out that if they play good, solid football, they don't turn the ball over, that they can hang in with a top 10 caliber team. CU, I think, has learned that you have to get up each and every week, especially when you're ranked in the top 10, because everybody comes to play, and they come to play with beating you in mind. Tough game next week against Illinois. Very tough game. National television. Two teams that will probably be undefeated. Both at 2-0. Third and five. Eminem. Greens at the car. Michael Jones makes the tackle on Carr at the 45. Is Illinois off this week? So they'll yep. be one and them. Well, I guarantee you Illinois will be undefeated next week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a safe assumption. <laughs> See the play as Jimenez tries to dump it off. Pretty good linebacker play there. This car doesn't have much room to run. Tim Luke is on. Only the second punt of the entire ball game. On offense. On the sidelines. Not a very good effort. We'll come back, find out where they mark at 11.23 to go. Colorado 38. Colorado State 20. Wearing that number 53 warm-up is Kevin Verdugo. He's out with that shoulder injury, and he looks on now trying to cheer his team on. As they've got 11.23 to turn this one around. They trail 38-20 to 20. after playing an excellent first half. CU's got it first and 10 on their own 19. Kissick is stood up immediately by Eric Tippeconic. They give him a yard at the most. Sure, the Buffs would like nothing more than to work on this clock, grind out a few first downs. We're less than 11 minutes to go. Kissick and Flanagan, the backs behind Charles Johnson. Fakes to Flanagan, looks to throw. Got Parrick, the tight end. Down out to the 35 where Tippeconic, Thompson, and Jones all combine to make the stop, and that's a Colorado first down. Charles Thompson with the delayed fake to J.J. Flanagan, hoping to hold those two inside linebackers. And you can see he does a pretty good job. It's a fine throw to John Perrick on a crossing route. Nice catch of the ball. It's a play that Colorado used successfully three or four times against the University of Texas. The tight end just drags up across, gets in the vision of the quarterback, and hooks up. First and ten from the 35. Johnson keeps it to the 37. CU, of course, Illinois next week. Then they have a bye. Then Dave and I have the next one on Channel 4, September 30th at Washington. Dave, that will be a real struggle. Yeah, Don James, an excellent coach, always well-prepared out of the Huskies. They've got an interesting opener tonight. This afternoon, I believe, Washington plays at home against Texas A&M. That will be a good football game. Very good game. There's J.J. Johnson's outside. Nice open field tackle by Andy Burns, the free safety. Flanagan down at the 40. It'll be third and five. Of course, after the Washington game, the Big 8 schedule starts back here on October 7th against Missouri. Missouri might be the most improved team of the Big 8 conference this year. Bob Stoll, an excellent coach in his first year in Columbia. Third and five for Charles Johnson. Parks the signals. Wants to throw. Incomplete. He was looking for Campbell. Selwyn Jones was with Campbell, and the Buffs will have to punt with 9-10 to go in the game.
there's a pass that you just want to feather in, get some air underneath the football. Free safety was up playing the run, and Jeff Campbell has the cornerback beat. Let him run all the way across the field, just throw it up nice and easy, and allow a guy with great speed to run underneath it. And that comes with just playing more football, something Charles Johnson has not had a chance to do. Tom Bruin on the punt for the Buffs. Rodney Bowman for the Rams is back at his own 20. And we are in a holding pattern. Now we're ready. On the scrimmage, the Colorado 40. Oh, a high punt, driving Bowman back to his 12. Breaks one tackle, out to the 15, and he's hit by David Brown. CSU will have it at their 15 after a 49-yard punt by Ruin and a three-yard return by Bowman. If you want to be a part of the studio audience for the Dan Reeves Show, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope with your choice of dates to Dan Reeves Tickets. Post Office Box 5012-TA, Denver, Colorado, 80217. That's the Dan Reeves Show every Monday night at 6.30. Dave Logan, I know, will be in that studio audience. I'm a big fan of the show. Absolutely. 8.41 to go. First and 10. Jimenez back. And it's intercepted by Dave McLuhan. McLuhan down to the 20 where the Buffs will take over. But this ball is tipped right at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if we can see it. Goes over the head of Sean Willis into the hands of Dave McLuhan. And I think it's freshman Leonard Renfro that gets a hand on it. You're right. And there's Dave McLuhan playing in the zone. Fortunate play for Colorado. Tough to run that play into the short side of the field. And again, pretty good pressure forcing Jimenez to sidestep to the left, thus right into the hands of Leonard Renfro, who's able to bat the ball. Eight and a half minutes to go. Colorado up by 18, knocking on the door at the Colorado State 21. The pitch to be enemy. And he's thrown for a loss. He's run out by Steve Rule, number 59, the junior linebacker from Cherry Creek. Fine play by Rule. Loss of a couple, second and 12. I just spoke of weak side play. That time they tried the power toss to the weak side. If that play is going to be successful, you've got to knock everybody down because there's just not much room to maneuver as a running back. That time, good job by Rule fighting off a block and right there to greet the enemy. Pritchard is wide to the left. You can see the numbers for the enemy. Very impressive. Here's Eric. Nice goal. Scoops inside. Breaks a couple of tackles inside the 10 to the 9. It's a 13 yard pickup and a first down. Gary Thompson made the tackle, but a fine run by Eric B. Enemy. High formation, just a simple lead. Led Hemingway walk the enemy right through the line. And again, look at the power that he has. He breaks away from Wilson. He almost breaks away from Carroll. And a good tackle by Gary Thompson. First and goal from the nine. MJ Nelson now the wide receiver. The enemy and Hemingway the backs. Charles Johnson the quarterback. Is the enemy again. Big hole. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. I, tell you, I hope Eric Bieniemy is not seriously injured because he went for the end zone about three yards out and he landed directly on his neck. I tell you, you're going to get a chance to look at it. The enemy will surge in the air, breaking the plane of the goal line. He sees the end zone. He lands actually on his right shoulder and his neck. The ball pops free, but they ruled he had the football when he crossed the plane. Take a look at how he lands when he goes for the end zone. The enemy up and over. The ball extended. And he lands on the right side of his neck. Oh. 
Running backs can just sense the end zone. Sometimes you know you're going to score, and good ones think they can score all the time. George Hemingway with an excellent block, and the enemy just lifts himself into the air, lands on the shoulder of the neck. Let's just hope he's okay. He looks to be, because Eric is up on his feet, waving to the crowd, saying, I'm okay. And that is good news. That may be the best news of the day. But there was one saving grace there when looking at that replay. It looked like the enemy, Dave, could brace himself a little bit with that left hand, and that might have pushed him the blow a little bit. Yep, good to see him get up, walk off. He'll probably be very sore tomorrow, but could have been worse. And the kick is up and good. 7.57 to go. 45 to 20. Colorado over Colorado State. You take a look at Eric Bieniemy. What a great run this is. The offensive line with the slide block on the weak side. Hemingway in the middle. Bieniemy sees the opening, and he is going for the goal line. Greg Luganis would have been proud of that dive. Three plays, 21 yards. The enemy racked them up, and you're a good point. Greg Luganis would have been very happy with the technique on that drive. And that's just propelling yourself in the air, wanting to score at all costs. And he did. That's what makes him the kind of back that he is. He's got that, that kind of savvy, that kind of desire. That size, you got to have that. Hobbitson's kick. Well into the end zone with 757 to go. Colorado State will take it on their 20. 45 to 20, Colorado. Wasn't always one-sided though. The first half was competitive, well played, exciting, a lot of points. Colorado State led for most of that first half. See you with mostly first-team defensive people still in the ballgame. Number 34, Chad Brown, is in at linebacker. The report from the CU bench, Mark McIntosh, says that the enemy just bruised his shoulder a bit, but he's okay. CSU takes a timeout. The score probably won't indicate this, Ron, but uh, I think Earl Bruce has a lot to be pleased with. I think he's outmanned here this afternoon, and he had to guess that coming in, but the Rams played very good football in the first half. Competitive. They didn't turn the ball over. They've done that in the second half, giving the football away a couple of times, but I think Earl Bruce will be an excellent coach for CSU. They're now at home for the next two weeks in games that you might think are very winnable for CSU. They played two pretty good football teams to start the season on the road. That's a very good point. Good to see the enemy uh, smiling there as he's getting wrapped up, some ice. Of course, don't forget, the Broncos start tomorrow. How do you see the Broncos this year? Well, I'm not exactly sure, to tell you the truth. I predicted 10 and 6. I I think now I may have to drop it again because of all the things that have happened. I, I still think they'll be a pretty good football team when it's all said and done. On the 20 on first and 10. Jimenez throws and it's complete. Out to the 35 to Sean Willis. McLuhan makes the tackle there. CSU in the hurry up offense. Willis has done an excellent job. Again, five catches, 74 yards last week against Tennessee. Got very good hands, excellent speed. Had a big touchdown catch in the first half. Willis and Rodney Bowman are wide to the left now. And the handoff goes to Mac Renato. Outside across the 45 to the 47. David Gibbs made the tackle, but a flag is down. Of course, Dave, we thought all along through summer that uh, Keith Ponoflet and Dion Figures would be the corners, and they turn out to be David Gibbs and David McLuhan as the call is holding on CSU. CSU's had to overcome the loss of those two quarterbacks. And really, I think the secondary has benefited, at least early in the season, from a great pass rush, something that they're going to need next week when Illinois rolls into Boulder with Jeff Jordan. 
on the offense. Second down. A couple of second team people now in for CSU. Greg Beaker at 53. Leonard Renfro is in for Salavia. Chad Brown, 34, and at one linebacker spot. Marcellus Elder, a freshman defensive tackle, is in. He's number 97. Get a pretty good look at him. His nickname, the Earthquake. Gary Howe, nose tackle, number 95 is in. Greg Thomas, free safety, number 27. It's in for Bruce Young. It's Jimenez. Throws to Willis. Across the 35 to the 37. Young makes the stop. How's it going? They've had this play run successfully. Willis just drags across underneath the linebackers. This is the sixth catch of the afternoon. So you can see you now will give up passes such as that. They don't want to give up the big play. Willis has had an excellent afternoon. Sure has. Second and seven from the 38. MS. Steps up. Here comes the rush. Hits it off and it's over the head of Tony Carr. Well, him and has got a pretty good look at Marcellus Elder. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Right in his face. It's a great nickname, the Earthquake. <laughs> Mike Motley, 98, a junior linebacker from Houston, is in for the bus. Looks like Colorado may be offsides right in the nose. Well, we'll see if it's offsides or illegal procedure. Get ball, start. Good luck, and it is on CSU. You see Adam Whitmer just move a little bit. Of course, it's a horrible feeling for an offensive lineman because you know somebody has seen you. And you're going to get a flag. Darian Hagan is back on the bench. His arm is being wrapped. Hopefully he's fine. And he'll be ready to go next week against Illinois. Play action. Jimenez goes... For Sean Willis, it's complete at the Rams 48. That'll be a CSU first down. Seven catches now for Willis. It's the most catches you ever had in one game up here. Oh, I, probably two. Two or three. Good good throw by him it is. The flag route. The good catch by Sean Willis. I'm sorry I don't about, know. Sorry about it's, that up, Dave. It's been 19 years. I mean, how about, I, I, I don't think I ever caught more. I probably had four or five. Maybe six. It was an All-American in 1975. He might have had more than two in one game. As Jimenez on the delay to Tony Carr. Hawk tied at the 50. <laughs> Beaker. <laughs> Along with Elder, get up off the pile. We ran the ball a lot. We're going to look in the book. We're going to we're going to find this out exactly how many catches. Let's check how many catches that Logan did have in, in one game. Yeah, he most in one game. I think four or five. Yeah, I remember you did run the ball like I know a couple of years for the year you had like 20, 25 catches. Yeah. You don't have to remind me. Sorry, I brought that up. Five twenty-two to go in the ball game. Forty-five twenty. Colorado, Jimenez with time, goes over the middle and incomplete for Willis. Julian Hayward, freshman cornerback from Dallas in the ball game on the coverage. It's kind of embarrassing here as we get the book out. Now we're going to delve into this a little bit. In 1974, Dave Logan, 21 catches for 273 yards, an average of 13 a crack. He came back in 75. He exploded with 23 catches. How many touchdowns? Uh, I'm still looking for any touchdowns. For 392 yards, 
17 yards a crack did not score in 74 or 75. C catching passes. Catching passes. Jimenez <laughs> throws the car. He's got it. He's to midfield. And down he goes. Blaine Davis, number 21, in on the tackle. Pretty good little sidestep by Carr. Just too many black jerseys. Luke is on to punt for CSU. It's tough when you're in the last five minutes, you're down by 25 points. Right, and CSU is not a great throwing team. I mean, this is a team that would like to be able to establish a running game in every contest they have. And when you're 25 points down, as you said, you've got to throw. And it's just not the easiest of things to do. Cohen is back on his own 10. Steve Harms, our crack spotter over the years, now looking through the guide, looking for some positive Dave Logan statistics. He'll come up with them shortly. As this ball takes a... They may have it on the one. I think they do. CSU downs it on the one. 49-yard punt. 4.22 to go. Colorado comfortably out in front. There you see it, Colorado comfortably out in front, 45 to 20, with 4.22 left in the game. Dave, obviously an offensive uh, outburst for Colorado today, 414 yards. That, that is not a school record by no. any stretch of the imagination. But a good uh, day nonetheless. Is that just on the ground? I think that may be. The school record for for rushing yardage, but not for total yards. Right. Michael Simmons, number 42, the junior. The Kirkwood, Missouri, the ball carrier. Of course, Simmons was a starter way back when. Sat out for a year for disciplinary reasons. Trying to work his way back up that depth chart. He's a pretty good player to be your third team fullback. That he is. And I just want to mention that we're ki all kidding aside, Dave Logan, great <laughs> career. 67 catches for 1,078 yards. An average of 16 a crack and four touchdowns. Brought two punts back for touchdowns. An All-American in 75. Charles Johnson from his end zone. Fires it complete to John Bowman, the tight end out of Vegas. Bowman a sophomore and for John Perry. Tell you what, Charles Johnson looks like he's got great poise and he just waits and waits. Eludes a tackler, almost runs out of bounds and delivers a strike. John Bowman. That would have been a catch, obviously, in the National Football League with both feet inbounds. Thompson really has a pretty good arm. Yeah, he does. First and 10, the ball is on the 16. <laughs> Hand off to Matt Bell up the middle across the 20 to the 23. Bell, a freshman red shirt, 5'8", 185 pounds. We were talking about records for total yardage. 1971, CU playing Oklahoma State in Boulder. The Buffaloes had 512 yards at half. That's uh, that's putting on a few yards. Well, Six, that sure is. 676 for the game. What happened in the second half? What happened to the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys? Then goes across the 30 to the 32. That's Michael Simmons again. Of course, the Centennial Cup goes to the winner of this game. And as Dave pointed out, they won't play again until 92. That's too bad. This would be a yearly event. I'm sure it will be as the series is now resumed when the schedules are cleared up. They make the schedule so far in advance. I think it's good for the state. It's good for people that live in Colorado to see CSU and CU. I'd like to get Air Force back involved. Of course, they play CSU yearly. But they haven't played CU for quite some time. Here's Matt Bell. Not to about the 38. Flag is down. They have a face mask. Harlan Carroll was on the stop. 2.26 to go in the game as we chug into a conclusion here in a game that has lasted in excess of three hours. Yeah, basically because of all the penalties. If you look at the scoreboard, you see CU ahead by 25 and reflect back to the first play of the game. It, it didn't appear that it was going to be one of those days. No, it did not. Tony Alford, if you joined us late, took it 59 yards. CSU had the lead. Face mask on the defense. Still first down. 
Hagan then came back, took it 71 yards by himself on the run, tied it. Verdugo threw to Willis to give Colorado State the lead. The enemy ran 44 yards to tie it. Brown kicked the field goal to give CSU the lead. Culbertson came back and tied it with a field goal. And then late in the first half, the enemy, on a five-yard touchdown run, capped off a six-play, 91-yard drive that gave Colorado the lead for good. Johnson looking to throw, and it's deflected. Batted down. I guess just to give the guys some work, but I'm not sure why CU at this point in the game is throwing the football. Yeah, there will be times this year that they're going to have to, certainly. O.C. Oliver, number five in the game for the first time. Well, there's a name of the past. Yep. Leading rusher as a freshman. Wanted to move, I believe, to the defense and secondary, did they not? And now is lined up in wingback. Michael Simmons with it. And second effort, and third effort, he'll be close to a first down. Colorado will go to 2-0, Colorado State to 0-2. But Colorado State goes home for the next three. Eastern Michigan, Cal State Fullerton, and the Air Force. And they've got a lot to be proud of there with the way old Bruce has molded this team here early in the season. Matt Bell, across the 45 to the 47. Nice to see Matt Bell get some action as he was one of the in-state recruits out of Thomas Jefferson High School. Great player down at TJ. We're looking in the book here. This is amazing. We'll get to this in just a minute about the number of draft choices play for CU when you were there as Bell takes in the CSU territory at the 48 with a minute 10 to go. In 76, when people forget who are new to the area, what great teams Colorado had in the mid-70s. In 76, Troy Archer, Pete Brock, Mark Concord, Dave, Dave Logan, Mike McCoy, Steve Young, David Williams, Terry Coons, Bob Simpson, Gary Campbell, and Whitney Paul all drafted off that 76 team. Pretty good team. This is Simmons, breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. Finally pulled down at the 37 by Harlan Carroll. See, this is a kid that is running as though this drive is going for the winning touchdown because for Michael Simmons, it is. He's been out of football for a year, and he's got to prove to Bill McCartney with both Eric Kissick and George Hemingway in front of him that he can still play. And this is determined running. This should be the final play of the ball game. And it's Bell. Down to the 34. I don't believe CU will run another play. So the Buffs got a scare, a major scare in the first half and well into the third quarter. But they wore down a smaller team, but a very game, gutsy, and determined Colorado State team. Colorado wins it. 45 to 20. We'll be back to Boulder in just a minute. West Communications has a question for every small business. When you have a customer on the line, who's to say you aren't missing a bigger one? Call us about adding another business phone line. U.S. West, making the most of your time. I'm Ty Nellaway with Nellaway Business Machines. NBM and Mita, the number one company in copy reliability, now introduce our new line of facsimiles. Now you can send and receive letters, graphics, and documents over the phone in seconds. Meters have speed dialing, automatic paper cutters, and feeders, features that are designed for speed, performance, and above all, value. 
As Mina faxed is the most economical way to communicate, call Nellie Business Machines at 759-4777 for free demonstration. Bill McCartney with the Fruits of Victory. This McDaniel Cup in his hands as the Buffs do it 45-20. A very impressive second half day for Colorado. Yeah, I thought they came out and did what they had to do. Bigger, stronger up front. They dominated the line of scrimmage. And, of course, give CSU credit for playing the way they did, especially in the first half, making a very close game of it. Both teams, I think, look for exciting things as the season progresses. And, of course, next Saturday, Colorado won a big one against Illinois. I want to thank our statistician Ray Friedman and our spotter Steve Harms. So the final score, Colorado 45, Colorado State 20. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Produced by Terry Trevato. Directed by Tom Richards. Chief engineer, Tom Piper. For Dave Logan, this is Ron Zapolo saying good afternoon. <laughs>